Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are on this crazy planet. This is Mark Gray, uh, live from Normandy, France, uh, for the, the new show on DTV, Dimension TV. And I have the, uh, the great pleasure to be hosting tonight a brand new guest. He's American, but currently staying in Hawaii, uh, Michael Hammer. Welcome, Michael. Thank you, Mark. It's great to be here. And um, I'm not going to call him Mike Hammer because he's not as famous as yet at his eponymous TV series classic, uh, Mickey Splain's Mike Hammer, later titled uh, The New Mike Hammer, with Stacey Keach in the title role in 1984. But your research is much more uh, valuable and crucial uh, to mankind than any TV drama. <clears throat> it's about our origins, our free will, and about clues to figure out uh, what we do here on, on this prison planet. Uh, and exploring some new ways uh, out of the matrix or the patrix. It depends on uh, which, which, um, which angle you're, you're looking from. And as Pen, Wes Penry uh, would say, you know, the patrix, well, we'll talk about that. Your book is entitled, uh, is titled Living in the Matrix, Understanding and Freeing Yourself from the Clutches of the Matrix. Um, Michael, you're a multidimensional music composer including music for meditation, healing, and exploration of consciousness. And your website is michaelhammermusic.com. Uh, and I'll add it to, the, uh, to our okay. recording today. And you're the author of Living in the Matrix, which explores the galactic history, the creation of the Earth and humanity, spirituality in past and current events on Earth, as a reflected in the arch architecture of the matrix which governs uh, our reality and you're exposing in this book who's behind it all and why and today we're going to cover a lot of ground uh, that you developed in your book but not only uh, we'll go beyond the book because um, you told me um, that you were actually making some additions to it right yes um I wrote the book a little over a year ago, and since then, a lot of new information has come in, and I found out that some of the, the galactic history I wrote about was not correct, and I need to do. Um, what I want to do is describe what the Matrix really is, how it was created, why it was created, who's behind it, and the characters that are running it, mm -hmm. and their motives. And then show uh, what is not the matrix and how to get out of the matrix. Okay. And, uh, All right, right, that's right. A, that's a really big topic and has a lot of branches you could go off, but I'm, I'll try to stay as simple and as focused as possible because it, uh, the matrix is, is in essence our reality, which includes everything that we experience and do and um, it's everything. How would you uh, describe it in a, in a nutshell for um, my listeners know the concept and, and grasp all of it but okay. if you know anyone else would listen to us for the first time what would you tell them it is it is like it, it's like a program it's a holographic perspective of, of our reality with you know uh, it's about our, perce our perception of reality with uh, let's know what you what you put you put out there. It's, it's um, the universe we perceive with our senses, basically. And uh, what I learned is that it's a, actually a mimic of the real universe, but it's made to look like it's the universe, but it actually is a very, it is in a sense part of the real universe, but it has a, um, very cleverly designed to keep us trapped within its control grid. So it really is the most sophisticated prison ever conceived. And it keeps us, most people don't know we're even trapped within it and think that's all there is. And um, <laughs> so everything in this, I call it a, it's like a false reality, is backwards and um, designed in a way to keep us um, in ignorance and trapped, even though there is spiritual development and evolution and all that, um, what we were before this matrix was created um, is, is we're a very, um, 
like a dumbed down version genetically engineered with uh, lacking connection into most of the universe. I call it the 96% of the universe, whereas we're, the universe that we perceive is mostly the 4% of the visible spectrum of light, which we call physical universe. But it also includes the astral and etheric realms as well. And within that are all the heavenly realms, which are also a false creation, although they're very real to us. Okay, um, so so what is the basis for your research and findings, and and uh, what do you base your your sources upon, and and where from your, um, I guess Sumerian yeah. texts and, and yeah, I and mean ba basically it's a, a, the most important is observing reality on this planet, and and seeing that mm, not everything is what it seems to, appears to be and uh, seeing falseness behind many things, seeing all the lies that are being perpetuated and looking at history and seeing what looking at Nimesh, which is the Babylonian story of creation and um, some, that's said Sumerian text, Nadamadi, Bible, um, Vedas, they all have truth in them, but it's all covered to make it appear a certain way. And all and apparently the names are even um, changed to make it look like they're different characters that are doing things. It's very clever, uh, extremely clever, and it can mislead you very easily <laughs> unless you understand the motive behind it, and then you can see what they're trying to cover up. It's kind of like looking at a magician. His hands are trying to show you one reality, but behind it, he's covering up something else. And unless you could see and understand his trick, he'll be deceived by it. Kind of like that. Right, right. Uh, it's it's sort of based. Um, well, it, it's it's main main purpose, and you're going to talk about that tonight. Um, is it, to keep us trapped uh, behind this this sort of like soul soul catching net uh you know the, the reincarnation trap uh Absolutely. and so forth and and uh that's that's the main purpose behind behind the deception oh also mind control which is i mean everyone to some extent is mind controlled but it's it's quite <laughs> it's quite pervasive starting from when we we're very little <laughs> right in the whole educational system and what we're taught and what we think is reality, we're taught. Um, I, I know it's a short book, uh, but you covered so much ground in it. It's it's very impressive. Um, you know, I, I, as opposed to compared with uh, West Penry's five thousand pages that he's written uh, all over the place, and this is all condensed. And uh, I encourage people to to go check it out, and I'll I'll, I'll um, add the link at the uh, at the end. Um, where can actually I? Actually, after I wrote my book, I, I came upon West Penner Papers, and I must say I was really impressed by it. And he's the one that um, made me see that the galactic history was different than what I thought it was. So I really uh, um, highly recommend him, even though right. it's a vast work, but it's, it really has all the details which I could never explain. Right. And he's done incredible research. Right, 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 right. Um, can we start with the galactic history that um, that you describe in your book, or or uh, about your okay. new findings, maybe if they're based yeah, well, on new findings from you know after the book? Well, I'll, I'll describe the main the main characters. There's there's not that many that have shaped our history, and I would say that all of it stems from a family feud that originates in Orion. So if we look at all the wars going on throughout history, it's all related to this family feud. <laughs> and that's the family feud uh, that has to do with uh, the creatrix, the one who created, uh, is known as the Orion Queen. She's the physical incarnation of the creatrix. And her firstborn son is Enki, 
and their second born son is Enlil. And um, this thousand names to, there's so many names to each of these beings. And um, I could go into some of that too, because Enki is also known as Lucifer, um, Zeus, Poseidon, Jupiter, um, Ea, Oannes, Dagon, uh, Ptah, Neptune, <laughs> this goes on and on. And um, what, what were their basic motives be, uh, um, for, for those major beings? Basic what? M motives. Okay, so th as the story goes, is um, this the biggest empire in this universe is the Orion Empire. And it's a very ancient empire. And um, I mean, it was at one point a conquering empire and it conquered many star beings. And now it's peaceful and quite the opposite. And um, at the time, they, they were um, unconquerable and were holding peace throughout the universe. That was their, their motive was to uphold the law, the basic laws of free will. And the mother goddess, who was also known as Nin Persag and Queen Nin, Queen of the Stars, Queen of Orion, was incarnated as the mother goddess on Orion. And she was basically in charge, the ruler of the Orion Empire, and for and this goes back billions of years. Okay, so at one point there was a rival which was uh, coming from Sirius, and they were also a conquering, a newer conquering race, and the queen could see that uh, they were trying to conquer Orion, and they had several attempts and they failed but the queen could see that there would be trouble in the future and trouble for other star nations so she proposed a peace treaty and that peace treaty involved um, the marriage of the king of the syrians which is anu he's known as anu but anu is a title but he's actually known as king or khan and leel and that's not to be confused with Prince Enlil, which is actually um, the, the uh, Orion Queen's second son. And that's where West Penra research is straightening me out on that. So, and actually the, when the king decided to sign the, the pre peace treaty, which meant marrying the Queen of Orion, they became allies and joined forces for keeping peace. But at one point, the queen and the king saw that Enki had pride and was going to be trouble. So they gave his heirship, being the firstborn son, to the secondborn son, which was Prince Emil. And so Enki became very jealous of that. And that led to him um, rebelling against Orion, which is also known as Lucifer's Rebellion. Enki is Lucifer, the same being. And um, as, as we all know, Enki lost that battle. Um, he was fighting his brother as Archangel Michael. That was another name for um, Prince Enlil. Archangel Michael second in command and Archangel Michael first in command was Khan and Leo, which is the same as the king of the Syrian king. So um, Enki joined forces or was very persuasive and he had the gift of the gab and was able to persuade some of the former Syrian um, warriors to join his side and uh, they were the ones that aided him in trying to conquer Orion. But after he failed, um, he came back to uh, 
his his mom had a creation his mom's most beloved creation was Tiamat and Tiamat was a planet uh, much larger than earth maybe the size of Saturn or Jupiter seven times and the queen had started an experiment on Tiamat by creating uh, was the first human species which was known as the Namalu, according to Wes Penra. And they were uh, guardians of a living library, which um, which uh, Barbara Mersiniak and the uh, Palladians gave that term. And the living library was that uh, the nature there was, was um, very, you could learn, people from all over the universe would come to learn from the nature there. And Anamalu'u were like the librarians of the, of the nature. They could communicate with nature and they could call, communicate with the rest of the universe. And even though they were f somewhat physical on a higher vibration, they could also access the rest of the universe and they were totally in contact with the queen and uh, they were very highly developed. So in the rest of the universe, a highly developed beings can, tra can um, they have a, like a light body avatar, which is really their soul and they can become whatever they want to become. They have the ability to split off their body and become another body and have full memory of it. So these Namalu'u didn't reincarnate because there was no need to. They could, they always had their full memory intact. And should something happen to their body, which was almost immortal anyway, they would still have their full memory and can regenerate another body. So there really was no death like we experience today, nothing like that. And they had total ability to be whatever they wanted to be, whatever form they wanted to be, as well as their human form. And that was the original heritage of the human. And there, it would be far for them to try to merge with source or evolved because they were fully evolved and fully, um, they did have challenges, but it wasn't like negative challenges that we have. And, uh, well, they, they still sparked some major wars uh, with, in the Orion Belt. Not, um, the Namalu were in a warring species. Okay. This is on Tiamat. Okay, right, right, right. And the beings that were protecting them were the, the titans, which were, now these are giant beings, but the planet was giant, you have to understand. And the Namalu'u were, would be to us a much bigger, and maybe like, you know, giant compared to us would be giants. But compared to the planet, they would seem normal. And all the species there didn't, there were no predators like there are today. It was, uh, everything, the lion and the lamb would coexist without eating it or disturbing it. It was known as the golden age that it lasted for millions of years. And um, so when Enki lost Lucifer's rebellion and retreated, he came to Tiamat because it was his mom's most esteemed creation. It was an experiment for the future blueprint of evolving species. So Tiamat was, uh, was looked at, it was the only thing, I mean, it was the only creation of its kind at that time in the whole universe. So a lot of beings were looking at it as, uh, you know, wow, this is the most incredible thing that was occurring. And so when Enki Lucifer came here to Tiamat, it wasn't heavily guarded, and he saw an opportunity for, uh, he wanted to take over Tiamat, because he saw that his mother's spirit was within the planet. 
and the beings were were royal blooded because they had the goddess blood so you know a lot of beings were kind of envious of these beings because they were they were going to they could do more than almost any being could they were fully evolved and fully could travel in the whole universe and enjoy physicality at the same time and um so Enki started uh, to take over the Namalu'u and that's alerted the Titans and alerted Orion. And so Orion came here and that spur spurred the war of the Titans, which is quite well known in Greek mythology. So the Titans were the ones that sided with Orion and the Olympians were the ones that sided with Enki and Lucifer and his minions. And um, that war was uh, resulted in um, um, uh, Tiamat being exploded. They had very advanced weapons and exploded the planet. Uh, that was done by Enki. And um, apparently uh, Orion had to retreat and basically lost the war. And then Enki took over not only Tiamat, but the whole solar system. And um, he also took over a lot of other star systems around it. And basically, uh, he, he started a fragment of Tiamat became the Earth. So when the Bible talks about the creation story, it's really starting with creating, recreating uh, the earth, which he named after him, one of his names is Ea, he named it after himself. And so he became, he re well, he, he, a lot of the nature still survived after the, that fragment, the much smaller fragment was left and he re-engineered uh, the creation now to be very different. So he uh, designed everything to uh, prey off of everything else. Everything he had to eat and kill other things. And he made, he redesigned a new human species, which was much to be a slave race. And this was to get back at his mother. You have to understand that he wanted revenge against his mom because he uh, was denied airship, the Orion airship. And now he was denied access back to Orion for losing the war. And uh, he was he wanted the revenge. So the whole creation of this reality has to do with revenge, the motive of revenge against his mother. And so it's duality based. It's what? It's duality based. Duality based. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, that's very prevalent, of course. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And um, it's so what he did is. Um, he created a uh, control grid around the solar system. Saturn was a portal. And Saturn controls the, one of the control grids and the other control grid is around the Earth itself. And he basically quarantined the planet from the rest of the universe. Uh, so no one could enter it. And he contained his creation within that control grid. And um, I mean, it's a very elaborate story and I'm, I'm going very quickly through this and I really urge people to read the West Penry papers to get all the details. But basically, um, when Enki wanted to create the first humans, he um, raped Isis, who was Prince and Leo's first daughter. And uh, and from that rape uh, created a son named Marduk, his firstborn son, which was the offspring of Enki and Isis. 
And so, so you're describing the, the Anunnaki family history, basically. Yes. Well, the Anunnaki is Enki. <laughs> right. Enki right. and his overlords are the Anunnaki. Mm -hmm. And to be even more uh, precise, the Anunnaki, the um, other um, ETs that we would know are all the Anunnaki, same beings. But they can take, they can shape shift and take on many forms. So, where whether you're describing a gray or a, um, a praying mantis being or someone, they're all related in some way to the Anunnaki, which are the Syrian overlords. <laughs> okay, right. I'm not a hundred percent sure of this, but I'm, the more I study it, the more that because of the shape-shifting going on and the quarantine around the planet, that whoever's in our reality, our universe, is, is the Orion, is, is the Syrian overlords. Right. So crossing over all this information from the, the, the Gnostic um, beliefs and texts and uh, Sumerian texts and uh, the Vedas and, and also some ET channelers like uh, Barbara Mersiniak, um, which, you know, sometimes it's, it's pretty hard to, uh, to believe everything she's, I mean, the channelers are saying, because there's a lot of, uh, information that's being, um, um, uh, filtered and, uh, a lot of deception among channelers, uh, mm. Billy Meyer, for example, uh, he was pretty much proven to be a fraud, um, uh, and, and at least in some of his claims and, and, um, uh, but I mean, they're saying a lot of good things. I mean, interesting things that are being confirmed by other sources, like mm. uh, the Bible, Gnostic yeah. text, and so forth. But it's mm. still related to some systems of beliefs, right? And 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 it's from the the perspective from inside the matrix. So so we're not sure of anything because because of uh, I mean the, the the time span that we're talking about millions of years ago we 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 I mean the, the news are fake today so it's it's hard to believe the that history is real from any sources you know Absolutely. you know what I'm saying <laughs> so. well you have to understand that Enki conquered conquered the Pleiades so the Pleiades is under his rulership too so Billy Myers and Barbara Brzeziniak mm. um, still support Enki's view and Right. Um, right. And Enki seems to be to be the well, it's Lucifer. So there's so many Luciferian movements among, you know, secret societies today, Freemasons, uh, and you see symbols uh, of Enki everywhere. I mean, in anywhere in our culture, our culture, you see an in well, Orion yeah, he, all over the place. <laughs> you know, the, the Orion symbols all over the place in movies. Yeah, he, he brought, those he brought a lot of those symbols from Orion to kind of twist them. And <laughs> uh, you have to understand his sense of irony and humor is to get back at, or everything's to get back at Orion. Even the names of places and everything. That it calls rem them. Reminds or, me Orion of names that are reversed and it's very oh. clever to what he did. But let me go on with the story because there's still more with ISIS. Um, right. So it was the experiment of birthing humanity came from ISIS and Enki. Somehow persuaded ISIS to birth this new species, which was the first human species. So there were many prototypes, the Neanderthal, Cro-Morgan, and all that. That was all from the ISIS, what ISIS birthed through Enki. And uh, so I had, and if you read the Sumerian text and Zachariah Sitchin, you'll say that Nin Hersog was the one who did that with Enki. She was a geneticist, a scientist. But uh, this is where West Penra straightened me out. And it's really, Nin Hersog is really the name of the Orion Queen. So he's, he's trying to, Enki's through history, Historical text is trying to confuse you to make it look like it was someone else, but actually um, it was Isis who was who was who was portrayed as Ninhursag, um, and Ninhursag had nothing to do with it. 
because she was the Orion queen. She had everything to do with birthing the original species of human, which was known as the Namalu'u, which was very different than what Enki and Isis did. So anyway, um, Enki took out 10 strands of the DNA and kept two so we could just be a slave race. But he also know, knew over time we would evolve, and um, which gave him time to put his control, everything to mind control and put the control grid in place. So the human species from the get-go was, was uh, a slave race, and then he um, designed superior genetics for those who were controlling the slaves, and that was the uh, blue bloodline, also known as the royal bloodline or blue bloodline, which had Enki and Isis's genetics, more of that in it. And um, the human slave race had more of the nom had the Namalu'u bloodline and many other, you know, ape from the cross, the ape, human ape, not the human, but the, as a form of ape which uh it wasn't it, the, it wasn't the bigfoot no this is as like the like uh the darwinian theory of evolution that ape was the man evolved from ape but that's not true but it's part this partial truth in it in that he did use their genetics uh yeah. in that <laughs> right well, oh, there's many there's many uh, things added in the mix, you know, star beams and all that. But he basically took out a lot of the, um, our connection to, to uh, what we had previously. He took that all out and just made us so we could be easily controlled. And then he gave more of the, the superior genetics to the controllers, but he edited out compassion so they don't have a heart and they don't have compassion as the global ruling elite, as you well know, don't seem to care much about human humanity and uh, they don't care if they kill a million people. That's because they lack a heart. <laughs> That's genetically engineered to be so. But if you, if you look at the, um, the royal bloodline well isis also is also known as the grail and she is also mary mother mary as well so the uh, grail bloodline is also the enki isis and that's the most prized of the global of they're even superior to the global elite they're the people behind the global elite that you never hear about and mm. Right. They have the most pure bloodline of Isis and Enki. And later Isis left Enki when she saw what was really going on. And then uh, Enki took on, raped Prince Enlil's second daughter, which is Arrest Gadal. And she was also known as the queen of the underworld. And she was basically took over Isis's position so there's a lot of confusion between Isis and Aristotle and the Divine Mother and all of that. So the, the beings that have Anki and Aristotle's bloodline are the second most pure bloodline. <laughs> so there are still royal bloodline, but not as high. Up. And then further down the road are the uh, global elite who have some of that bloodline, but you know, some of human, more of the human bloodline than that. And so all of the beings that are ruling us, you can, you can tell who's in the highest position by how pure the bloodline is. It's sort of a galactic uh, Game of Thrones uh, mm. <laughs> in the ancient days. Um, yes. let, let, let's go back just a, a, a few seconds on, on Sakaria Sitchin's character. Um, who was a Rothschild's agent and a Jesuit mm -hmm. and a Vatican agent and is believed today as 
by by many as i mean many that have challenged his works uh, on translating the sumerian tablets to to have been some somewhat of a fraud and that he was not an expert on on sumerian language and uh, that he made up some stories about the anunnaki from thin air um, and that cannot be found on the tablets that's some people say that um that it, he has deceived a lot of people but you know absolutely yeah Anyhow, what, what do you think of this? I think position? he was channeling, uh, I think uh, when certain inform when uh, Anki and his minions, overlord minions, want certain information to come out, they find a person who yeah, can carry that information. And uh, Zachary Sitchin is one of those people and they download him either through the dream state or channeling for him to get certain information. And basically, they're, it's a form of mind control. They're giving him what they want to put out there. But he's definitely aligned with uh, Enki <laughs> in, in what he's saying. And this is exactly what Enki wants us to believe. So I have made the mistake of, of taking his information literally and it was Wes Penra that made me see it correctly. Right, 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 right. So let's go back to the to Tiamat's uh, story. Um, Tiamat. Yeah. Um, what happened after um, after Lucifer, uh, well, uh, Anki, well, you know, being presented as, as the hero and the, the savior of humanity, actually Moses, um, not Moses, but um, um, what's his name? Yeah, I think so. No, was it? Moses? Yeah, he's he's all the history backs up. If you look at all history, it always backs up Enki being the savior, and it makes out the bad guys who are really the good guys is Prince and Leel, and he's also known as Ninurta, uh, to be the bad guy. So he gets the blame for doing all the bad things when it's really Enki uh, who's. He's trying to save the planet. <laughs> right, 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 right. So it's and, he, yeah. and and Prince and Leo was also had a big part to play in uh, the creation of Tiamat with his mom. So, so basically, history has been rewritten by the victor, and everything backs up and Leo uh, Enki being the good guy and his minions. <laughs> right, right, and, right. Where is Marduk's today? I mean, what, how, uh, what, what was his role? Mar Marduk is playing the role of, of God now. Right. <laughs> it's his firstborn son. And Enki and Marduk is also known as Satan. But uh, Marduk takes on Enki's role. They're very similar. So um, en Enki has been off planet for the last 4,000 years. And he has, he's, I mean, there's a lot of worlds he's uh, busy doing. So he leaves his son in charge and for the last 4,000 years, which to them is a lot, a lot of time in, in these, these beings' lives, they're immortals. Uh, Marduk has been the god being here. And uh, Enki has been basically in charge of the spiritual dimensions. So uh, all the spirituality, the spiritual matrix is run by Enki, and the earth matrix now is run by Marduk. He's basically in charge. Right, right. Yeah, tell us the difference between uh, the, the earth matrix and the, the cosmic uh, matrix. Well, we all know the earth matrix very well because we run into it daily, and whether it's red tape or, <laughs> or the sense of how bad things, well, I mean, not the sense, but all the horrific things that are happening on the planet. And uh, I don't really need to go into it because people are so familiar with it. Um, there isn't one country you can go to on this planet that's free of the matrix and uh, the way governments are set up is to keep people confined and keep them suppressed and all the wars that are being fought now are all all about that they're all false wars but 
Yes. The beings feed off these wars. I mean, it's, it's food to them. We call it loose. Mm. And it's, the more negative you create and the more grief and hardship, hardship you create, the more these beings can feed off of that. They um, need to keep humanity in a, in a low state of being. But at, and another, and from Enki's um, point of view, he's working in a whole different direction, and that is to, evol to evolve spiritually. And so he's created this huge spirituality on, on the planet that is, in effect, an escape from the hardships of the Earth matrix. So all the religions and the religious texts that go along it are Enki's creation. And his minions, I have to say, because his minions are, are working with him, which are the overlords, the old over, overlords, Syrian overlords, and others that he conquered. Um, New Age as well, right? New Age. Yeah, New Age. so they, the overlords portray the ascended masters, angels, archangels. Um, they run the different councils, high councils. And they look like they're good beings and they, and, you know, they put out really good information and they're the beings behind all the channelings and all the channelings look like you're getting really good information and um, you have from following different religions and spiritual uh, new age religions, I don't know what to call them, but disciplines, um, you get a lot out of them and you, uh, you progress in the earth matrix. So it's like uh, initiations and uh, spiritual gifts are given to you and feelings of bliss and ecstasy and, um, and also uh, kundalini experiences. They are all part of the earth matrix, the earth, the spiritual matrix. So right. why, why does Enki want it? Because he needs, he needs those spiritual beings. And a lot of those spiritual beings graduate and become masters and run uh, and become non-physical human, non-physical beings. They're not humans, I'm sorry who run the higher dimensions. <clears throat> and it's, it's still within the matrix. It's all within the matrix. So even if you graduate and become, they get to the highest level of, of seventh heaven, because there are almost infinite number of higher realms, because you could create them all the time. Uh, and there's new realms created all the time and new dimensions to explore. It seems like a limitless exploration of consciousness here on this planet. And it, it truly is in one sense. And you truly do benefit by these spiritual paths, but in terms of the earth matrix, and it still keeps you in the earth matrix. Um, it's kind of ironic because you were much more than all of that to begin with. And now you slowly getting it back either through technology, which is also a mimic of your natural abilities, which were your natural abilities. Right. An extension somehow. Yeah, because everything that's technology is a part of what you were, but because they can control technology, they're willing to give you that technology. And, um, The sad part about it, uh, which I want, I'll talk about later, is, uh, is the plan for singularity in the transhuman movement, which is going to be the ultimate control system of all. And we're, def we're, we're definitely uh, um, are running into that area. I mean, it's already begun. Right. Mm. So Enki is, he's, he's beyond clever because the way he designed the matrix is he, he has everyone um, so cleverly trapped 
and thinking there um, through the spirituality, they're escaping what the dark side of the matrix. But he uses cleverly uses love and light. It's a it's like a false love and light to to make people run to that when really that's also a trap as well. So he traps people from the dark and the light. It's quite clever. <laughs> Right, right. And do you think the um, Tiamat's um, destiny, well, which was destroyed, right, in the in the War of the Titans, um, right. is it what what's next, or is there a reset or blackout um, or an event, a big event, cosmic or Earth event, uh, coming up to destroy as well, um, you know, all traces of the Matrix or or or, or the new ti uh, Tiamat, which is Earth. All right. So. Um I, I, okay, so the War of the Titans happened about a half a million years ago, more or less. So I, this is something I need to explain. So the, um, and I'll get to that question. So uh, the, I would say maybe the first species of humans was only created maybe 400, three to 400,000 years ago. And if we're looking at Lemuria and Atlantis were going back maybe 100,000 years to when it ended at the fall of Atlantis approximately 13,000 years ago, which was the time of the Great Flood. And basically, uh, it, what Anki created was he created all kinds of weird experiments with giant centaurs and um, monsters of all kinds <clears throat> and at the end of Atlantis uh, humans were had space travel and I mean if you look at the Vedas they even tell you how to how the spaceships were designed and everything um, they were a threat, humans were a threat to the rest of the universe. So it was a decision made from Orion and other star beings uh, to terminate the human species, which was resulting in the great flood. That was, um, and Enki had to, Enki willingly went along with it, but, uh, he knew he knew that he had some he he actually in a backhanded way he saved the genetics of humanity and that's the story of Noah and the Ark. Noah is his firstborn human son, which was a, was between Enki and an Earth woman. That, that's the character I, I wanted to mention, Noah, Noah, and not uh, Moses earlier. You know, when I was talking about Enki's. Uh, Character yeah, and Noah, Noah also has a few names. He's also uh, known as Thoth Hermes. And he's, he's a big character in promoting religions. John the Baptist might be another one of his. Jesus. I'm not sure. Jesus is either uh, that character, Thoth, Noah, or he might be Enki himself. He's one of the two, I'm not sure. Um, it's still but, important to mention that that all those characters I, are. I think I think he's more likely to be uh, Noah Thoth because mm -hmm. they're big promoters. That's their their role. Right, and in every culture on this planet, uh, all the characters with different names represent basically the same stereotype, the same archetypes, uh, the same sigils. Right somehow yeah absolutely yeah it's just the same characters taking on so many different names and forms and deities uh, in different cultures they're named different things but they're really the same bunch of deities so most almost always I mean the ones in charge of being the god beings were either Marduk or Enki Lucifer and uh, the female goddess would either be Isis or uh, rest, rest, later was Arrestical. 
but Isis rebelled against Sankey and left him. Um, no, we, we see what they use the ISIS name and symbol for now today, you know, with the, the terrorist groups uh, funded by the CIA, yeah. of course, but well, they call it ISIS, you know. Right, and that's to get back at ISIS, because ISIS later um, trained a lot of women uh, to become shaman-like shaman beings, and they were, women were always the shamans in the old times, because they had more of uh, a connection to the mother goddess. They call it fire. West Penn calls it the fire, which is an aspect of the, the light body soul avatar. Um, it's just stronger. They have a stronger connection. And so they were the ones who were able to be the shamans of old. And then when Enki took over, he changed it from a matriarch and all the. <laughs> Sorry. Can I pause? Yeah, and maybe we, yeah, we should pause. Right now. I was afraid yeah. of that. <laughs> in is a is a matriarch. It's a, the it's a matriarchal society. Orion was a matriarch, and in the beginning, um, the uh, shamans were fem female, and so because they, they naturally hold the power. So what ink. Anki did is he uh, he started that whole movement to, of women were witches and they prosecuted them and he made it into a patriarchal society. So now the shamans are male and religious leaders are male mostly, um, and people in power are male. So it's and the gods are male. <laughs> so it's turned from a matrix into a patrix. Exactly. That's. Right. Uh, that's the word that uh, West Penry used, Patriots. So it's a good way to say it. Yeah. So uh, get, getting back to uh, at the fall of Atlantis, which was also the Great Flood, then when he, he saved the human genetics and he um, basically after the flood, he started, sorry, he basically after the flood and um, Enki rescued the genetic, that's what no, the, the story of Noah and the Ark is about, is he was rescuing the genetics of all the species. And so Enki went along with it because he wanted to create a new, even a new uh, third, that this would be the third species of humanity, um, which is the one that took place after the flood. And uh, this species was even more dumbed down <laughs> than the previous one. <laughs> and um, th that has to do a lot with the um, uh, biblical story of creation. That's, the history is trying to make out that man was, uh, you know, created relatively, I mean, our history only goes back, what, six to 10,000 years. And doesn't really acknowledge Atlantis or Lemuria, mainstream at least, and um, let alone anything that happened at the time of the Titan War or anything like that. And it's also interesting to note, this is something like, they say uh, they have, um, evidence of artifacts that go back billions of years on the earth. But that clearly is not from the earth because our earth history is only maybe 400,000 to 500,000 years old. So things like the dinosaurs were on Tiamat, not on earth. Just a little side note. And I would guess that they would not have been predators. So I was researching and found that they don't really have any real remains of like T-Rex. They're all under lock and key. <laughs> and the dinosaurs you see in museums are made in China. Right. And the first dinosaurs weren't discovered till 1850s and they were discovered by, curiously by scientists and not by laymen. There's, there's a little uh, side note there that seems to play into 
yeah, the earth, the, the things on the earth could be billions of years old. But they would be part, that part would be from Tiamat. So are there, there you think there, there were cycles um, between floods, floods, the great floods, in between the, the, those great floods, or uh, uh, has there been blackouts and resets of, of, uh, of um, humanity and, and the earth, and has it been like in, in, in a period of darkness and transition and where nothing was on it, or most... You mean, since, since the great flood, yeah, there have been many disasters, but nothing on the scale where it wiped out all of humanity. I mean, there's probably floods as recent as a few hundred years ago that uh, where cities were buried, but it's not in our history at all. So no one even knows how that happened. It could be some extraterrestrial battles that no one's really willing to talk about. And who knows how they play with timelines and uh, it could be reset. And uh, we know so little about our history and I was amazed, you know, even if you go to the Akashic Records, you're not going to get a true history, because those are altered as well. Um, and you... Yeah, because it's sort of managed by the astral realms, and basically they can, they can, uh, um, they, they can insert, insert any, any history uh, story that they want, right? And Absolutely, yeah. So if, if the outcome isn't what they want, they can rewind. <laughs> <laughs> right. and re rewrite the history right J just like um false memory implants you know and mm. and uh you know screen memories and uh, the mandela effects uh that has been uh uh running around <laughs> in our collective memories lately uh well it, it's maybe technology that's maybe that's all it is well yeah they i mean the technology is so sophisticated they know exactly what we think, and they have records of everything we do. Um, that's, there's no real privacy. <laughs> um, so as far as history is concerned, it, it's, um, there's some major texts where history is written, and you could get an idea of it. And if you know the motive behind what they're trying to steer you toward, you, you have an idea that of what is being covered up. But to know exactly what happened would be next to impossible. But, but you basically, you can know basic things for sure. But, but you, you mentioned, it's, I, think, I think it's a chapter of your book, uh, in your book, it's, it's why control of the people of the earth on earth is so important. Um, you know, our human incarnation is, is one aspect of our soul, that's what you, you wrote. And which is an aspect of eternal essence, and uh, and we have an experience of limitation here in the third D, in the three D, in the third dimension. Um, so, but we we were much more than this, and and that's why we're being dumbed down, so that we don't uh, we we get me our memory wiped, so we don't connect to our divine essence or true essence outside yeah. the matrix. Yes, that's that's correct. So um, the last thing that uh, Enki and his minions want is for us to connect with who we are, which is which has a lot to do with our memories too. And uh, so they keep us in a recycling program, which is called death <laughs> um, and the afterlife. And um, it's a very clever design thing, but so that has, also has ties into karma. So they want us to believe that, um, of course, the mainstream thought is that we were created by this God being, which is, of course, is the fatherly image of Yehovah, Yahweh, which is really Enki again. And uh, or whatever name you want to call it. In the new age, it would be source. Mm. And this God being is uh, our father, creator, Lord. And all the religions are designed to worship this being, or if not worship, to 
pray to him or um, some kind of rituals to honor him. And so he's taking in all this energy. It's a form of energy that he's getting from this. But he's also, um, he's the beloved of, of uh, all these, of most of the planet as well. And uh, people ask him for favors. And in ancient times, he gave blood sacrifices to this being to appease him. <laughs> Um, so we have our, so much our, our being is used to, um, this source being our savior too, and, um, giving our energy to him. So it's, it's actually part of our genetic design, you know, it's built into our architecture of the human design. So, uh. It's, it's another form of keeping us from knowing that we are, truly are as the source. Um, we, we are source selves, basically. Yeah. We're, we're, we weren't created by this God being. Um, you can say we were re-engineered later, but if, mm -hmm. if you want to call dumbing us down, creating us, um, I don't. I don't. <laughs> right. He, he is a creator in that way. Yeah, he created the, the uh, dumbed-down version of human. But what we started out with uh, as, as a human was much greater than that. And as a soul, we existed way beyond that, even be, before this universe was created. Um, we play many roles and we're, we do many things once we're outside of this matrix. We could be a thousand beings at once and take on many forms and we would have memory of all of that. And uh, we're, we're really such a vast being. It's like we're turned into a frog from being a prince or a princess. Right, 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 right. We can't conceive of what we really are outside of the matrix. Right. So inside the matrix, um, we're uh we're really being farmed uh we're really food for these beings and they also want spiritual food that's part of the design and they want a spiritual evolution which is also part of the design as long as they can control us and have control of us which is also part of their design to always control us so anyway going back to uh, the afterlife um, I get sidetracked because there's so many branches that interrelate. Right. So what's key, key to keeping us imprisoned is keeping our memory, keeping us from remembering who we are. Also, keeping us in a very short lifespan, average 80 years. Um, it's incredibly short. So, uh, and then keep us running around in circles trying to earn a living along with all the red tape and all the challenges we have on this earth, gives us very little free time to think outside of the box. And so uh, the afterlife, which is um, where normally we would go to the light through a tunnel of light, and then we would meet uh, the karmic lords, which would give us a life review and then tell us, you know, well, this is what you uh, need to fulfill to correct your karma. And they help you redesign a new life. And they let you have some time in the afterlife and recuperate and, and you design your, your next life, basically. And then you shot into another body of no memory of who you were. And you basically, doing this over and over again and uh, no no memory except for some a few gifts some sometimes or, or a few talents but yeah. mainly your tr your traumas your traumas are are deep are anchored into your dna from mm. you know, life to life that's that's right. what i noticed through therapists who who do hypnosis uh, right absolutely therapy and so forth 
And we make contracts in the afterlife so that this will occur at this time or we're born with certain handicaps or whatever. Oh, we're actually, they have to get our agreement. This is very important. We need our free will to cooperate. So they have many ways to manipulate us into going along with that. It's a, it's a fine art to them how to manipulate free will to seem like uh, we're, we're giving them permission. And a lot of times it's our own ignorance. We don't say anything, but if you don't say anything, silence is acquiescence. So you're really going along with their program by not saying anything. And then if you try to say something, well, it's very hard to turn it around. You know, who am I to turn around the government and what they do? It's very difficult. So, but from their point of view, if, if uh, you elected them or went along with the election or they didn't vote, you know, they still got elected. And then if they program the politician to do what they want, well, you've gone along with that too. So it's very devious how they get our consent. It's not a le level playing field in my book at all. Yeah, the, the, best, the best advice for us is ignorance is bliss. So <laughs> <laughs> that's basically how, how they, get it, they get our consent uh, yeah. from our silence. But, um, well, silence of, well... Then again, who are they? Um, if you have a, a few seconds to describe who the Archons are and, and basically okay. what, what's that collective, uh, wh why, what kind of parasites are they so that they need uh, our sufferings and soul energy and, and, and traumas and to keep us in trauma, uh, in a trauma-based society all the time and, and in survival mode so we don't have time to think and the short lifespan um, situation. <clears throat> okay, so the, uh, when Enki lost Lucifer's rebellion, the beings were, that were his minions were called fallen angels. Those were also the overlords, and I also believe they would, could be termed archons as well. They lost some of their powers and abilities through the war, and I don't know exactly how. So they found it easier to feed off of the human energy. And uh, originally I wasn't sure whether the Archons were separate from the Anunnaki, but I'm more and more leaning to that they're the same. I might be mistaken. Or are there, they could be a different faction within it, but very, they seem to be very closely linked in their purpose and how they function. Um, and remember these beings have many forms, so they could take on any form they want, from a light being to a dark, the darkest being. So... There could be worms in our bodies as well, right? Yeah, they have... Apparently, they are feeding off us in many ways. And, what, and like I mentioned before, that's why they need to keep the energy as low as possible here, through creating a lot of grief and suffering and disillusionment and poverty and wars and the all the negative things that are going on is mm -hmm. the more negativity produces more food loose for these beings. And then on the other hand, beings are getting food through worship and devotion and prayer. Um, that's the other aspect they're getting food on. And they're also somehow farming our soul and I'm not exactly sure how, but the soul has a certain energy and they're after, that's the key thing they're after it seems to be to me. Um, they're, we're not connecting to our, somehow we're not able to connect to our real soul. We're connecting to a soul fragment here. Because if we connected to a real soul, we'd have all the memories, of course. But the soul fragment is uh, why we have all these um, emotional problems and things we're trying to work out. It's, it's a, it's, uh, it's, it somehow works to fragment the soul. 
Yeah, the fragmentation is important because I think they keep us with with the with the words in the in, you know words are are being spelled, so they they put on spells uh, all over everybody. Um, and there's a there's there seems to be a confusion between consciousness between a a spark of of consciousness and spirit and soul, and everyone is like lost in the mi- in the middle of it and doesn't know which one refer to what and everyone has according to their system of beliefs their own definition for and description for for for, for the spirit the soul and, and consciousness you know and it's all confused and and, and the exactly. more confused it is the better it is for the archons absolutely mm-hmm. yeah that that's part of the game is create as much confusion over everything so that everyone in the spiritual movement no one's connecting and everyone's again has different belief systems and no movement can go anywhere, of course, because you never get enough like-minded people on anything. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's so true. Divide and conquer, it's called. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So we're, we're at what version of humanity today? I, I mean, we've come we're, from- We're still human, the third version, that's after the flood. But now we're evolving and more, we're going to morph into the human, the next, the next uh, version of humanity, which is the transhuman human, which is merging human with machine. At first, uh, if you could see the beginnings of it with the, uh, you, everyone has a cell phone and we're very much linked to cell phones, internet, computer, and we're more and more getting into the virtual reality realm. We're spending more and more of our time and you can really see it with the younger generation more and more. We're not out in nature as much. And they're spending the majority of their time in the virtual reality domain. And it's gonna become more so in the future and there'll be uh, a link between the human brain and, and technology so that the human brain will be merged with technology and can run it without having to press buttons and the internet will be in, inside us. Uh, and eventually that's gonna lead to cyborg states. We will have implants with technology in our body. And, uh, and then eventually it'll lead to uh, us becoming fully technology where our cells will be replaced by nanobots, which is starting to occur now. And then we'll, we won't be biological beings anymore, we'll be non-biological. Right, and semi-holographic, because I don't know if you, if you had the chance to check out the, uh, the Russian website that, uh, called the, uh, that I sent you by email, the, uh, you know, the Russian 2045 Avatar Project, um, mm. you know, and, uh, it's basically science fiction, but by the mm. year 2040, uh, 2045, uh, it's that's his name, uh, would like to see substance independent minds uploaded, not onto a computer chip, but into a bodies of different compositions. A holographic body could walk through walls or move at the speed of light while a body made of nano robots would be able to take on a number of different forms at will. Humanity, for the first time in history, will make a fully managed evolutionary transition and eventually become a new species, he writes. But you know what, you know, that will, that will get us to, you know, <laughs> a totally technologically controlled um, mind um, inserted into a hologram or a machine or, or a, a non-biological uh, container. So, so that's, that's where we're going. Yeah. This project. And well, I mean, the timeline for... What, what, you know, Ray Kurzweil is a big promoter of transhuman agenda. He's a, probably the foremost spokesman. And he says by 2025, we will attain singularity. And what singularity means, we're full merged with man. Uh, yeah. Okay, so Ray Kurzweil is the biggest promoter of the transhuman agenda. And his term for linking up the human with machine is called singularity, where when singularity is achieved, man becomes fully merged with machine. And uh, 
his reasoning is that it's unavoidable because the way technology is going today, um, if you look at the curve of technology, um, robots will be able to do everything humans can in a few years from now. And soon after that, we'll be able to do everything better than humans. So if you can't, and if you can't beat them, you have to do It's unavoidable. And Elon Musk said that, you know, he has a company called Neuralink, which links the brain to machine technology. He's saying if we can't beat them, we have to join them. In other words, robots will be so far more intelligent than us and superior to us, the only way we can compete is becoming merged with them. So it will start with humans being merged more and more with machines until singularity is achieved by when humans come fully merged with machine. And then there's really no difference between a human and a machine. <laughs> so we'll be a machine. And the reason why everyone, you know, the powers that be wanted and the beings behind the powers that be wanted is that they can control, fully control the humans once they re reach singularity. Because if you have any deviant thought, well, they can just... Well, first of all, it's highly unlikely you would have that because they could program what you can think and what you can't think. And um, you'll be fully controlled by them. And then you'll have all the great technology, of course. You'll be thousands of times smarter and you'll be like Superman, have superhuman abilities and uh, do all those things you mentioned eventually, yeah. And, uh, but you will lose your individuality and you'll lose your soul. You'll be, uh, all your brains and you'll be linked in a cloud, like a computer cloud. And. Well, that's what social engineering has been doing. So social engineering has been doing to mankind is, as as push mankind, well, dumb, dumbed it down and uh, uh, made it a hive-minded um, bunch, you mm -hmm. know, a collective. So um, exactly. the hive mind is what serves their, their purpose, their interests. Right. And they see that as the next stage of humanity. And that's where um, it's all heading, where you won't have, be an individual anymore. You'll be a hive, part of a hive mind. And when you're channeling most of these beings, they talk about we, it'll be like that, you know. They're linked, the brain is linked. They're much smarter because they have everyone's memory. And you're hooked into this vast consciousness and you're one with source. That's the spiritual aspect of it. And why, why do they want it this way is also because you're the ultimate weapon when you do this. And uh, there's a lot more I could get into it, but is uh, the, they want our souls as well. Because there's a lot of power in that and energy behind it. And they want to take all those souls and reconfigure that energy as somehow and make the ultimate weapon to attack or Orion. So it's all, it's all about getting Enki getting back at Orion. But well, Orion is creating the ultimate weapon, and that's what Super Soldiers is all about too. It's the same. Um, right. And Marvel, Marvel movies, you know, the franchise, yeah. Yeah. superheroes. Yeah. It's a, uh, they they make they make they make him so popular, and, with, and it's, it's nothing but Nazi propaganda. You know, <laughs> it's just from World War Two. So, yeah. <laughs> and they make it for the younger generation to want to become more of that, have the technological superpowers. Of course, if you don't go along with it and want to be go the old natural way, you'll have a very hard time work, earning a living and supporting yourself. They'll make sure of that. And they're downgrading the environment so because these new beings don't need a, you know, they could, be, they could survive quite well in a toxic environment. Right. And highly radioactive environment as well. Yeah. Reptilians yeah. and Dracos love that. Yeah. Uh, from, from what Absolutely. I've, heard from witnesses um 
so uh, it's not it's a very glim future that uh, you're describing but i think it's very realistic <laughs> well at first it's going to seem very glamorous because you're gonna part of the attraction of singularity is you'll live forever there'll be no more disease at first you'll be able to uh uh, replace limbs and everything that fail and you'll live longer but eventually you'll be immortal and live forever and whatever age you want to be you can become so if you're 90 years old you can become 25 so a lot of beings who are afraid of death which is most of humanity is going to embrace singularity with open arms plus to be so much smarter and intelligent and you know, be stronger and I mean it's gonna it's gonna start out like a great thing right and it's gonna trap people just like cell phones are today everyone loves them and they'll be kind of like that <laughs> right right a, a, a totally Orwellian society with with a, a hijacked reality that we um, we were more and more living in um, and away from the organic creation basically you know um, so how does that tie, tie in into Saturn and the moon matrix? Sa okay, you know, well, you know, Saturn, you know, Saturn awards, I'm sure you know what that is, right? The Saturn awards is, are American awards, uh, presented uh, each year by the Academy of science fiction, fantasy, and horror films. And they were <laughs> initially created to honor science fiction, fantasy, and horror, horror on film, but have since grown to reward other films belonging to genres fiction as well as films on television and home media releases and they were originated referred to as golden scrolls at the beginning and they were created in 1973 <laughs> interesting so saturn is a pun uh, uh in the inner court the highest inner court of orion is called satania <laughs> So uh, when Enki conquered the solar system, Saturn was very important because it contained uh, the portal uh, to enter the solar system. Entering and exiting the solar system was in, through Saturn. And that uh, was originally when, when it was controlled by, when it was before it was conquered by Enki, is also where the original council of Saturn was held. So when Enki took it over, he put his own council in, of course, and um, he controlled the portal. And who could, who could enter the solar system, of course, is through Saturn. So it's very important. And uh, that's why uh, Saturn is also one of the names of Enki, too. So he can, that's, and because he controls that planet, right? The Chronos, Chronos. Oh wait, maybe, maybe it's it could be Mar Marduk. I'm not Marduk, sure. Yeah. No, Saturn is Marduk. I'm sorry. Right, Saturn is Marduk, but hey, because Sa Saturn relates to Satan. Right, and, and but Marduk, you have to understand, Marduk and Enki are very, very close. They, they it's hard to tell who's who when it's Enki and Marduk. Chronos is Saturn. And Kronos, Kronos is our Kronos, Kronos is Saturn, and Kronos is our timeline uh, prison, basically. Absolutely. Right. So we're in. We live in a cube. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Saturn is uh, um, rings around Saturn. I believe are related to our chakras. And that's how they, the chakras are also a, a way of controlling us as well. Um, <laughs> through the rings, of, they somehow relate to the rings of Saturn and how the energy is fed to them. They feed their chakras. And uh, which is tied to the pineal gland and kundalini. It's all interrelated. So that's another, um, that's why Saturn is, such an important matrix. And as you said, all the symbology that comes from Saturn is. You know, right. The well, after, after death, I can imagine some of us are 
are being presented to a, a council or a tribunal on Saturn <laughs> and uh, being judged. <laughs> yeah, know, and it, threshold. Yeah, yeah. It's, it could very well be where we go. The afterlife is located in Saturn. It could very well be. That's my. And Saturn is also related to Satan. But that's very close. And all the satanic worshiping is acknowledges Satan as a uh, Saturn. I'm sorry, and Satan. Right. And if you look at all the corporate logos, they're all related to Saturn images. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I and I think at one point Saturn was like a sun to us too, and long ago. I don't know, it has a very prominent position. Uh, I'm not exactly sure of that, but uh, I suspect it could have been. Right, right. Because there's so much worship. A lot of the sun worship is really uh, mistaken for Saturn worship. So it's worship like a sun to many. Not all, but some. Right, 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 right. Barbara Mercenix, I think, uh, um, supports that uh, in regards to the moon that well, I guess what she said, what the, the, the artificial satellite is, is one of the control, control recycling center for, for Earth, for the souls from Earth. And the moon or Saturn? Uh, I think she, she, she mentioned something about, about the moon. Um, but um, some Indians say that all souls come from the sun and that they're tethers uh, to the sun, you know. So the sun and the moon and Saturn uh, seem to be a recycling center or, or, uh, or origins uh, for souls to be tethered from. I'm not sure uh, about the, the sun or, or the moon. I just, I don't know. I'm, I, I suspect that some souls may have been born from the sun that are here. Not all, but some. And the moon seems, I know was towed in there it's not, uh, you know, it's older than the earth and the way it rotates is not natural and its exact position to eclipse the sun is not natural. And, the, you know, someone did probabilities that it, what it could do and the geometries of it are less than a billion to one that it could be natural. So. Um, I think it's because it's the closest big object to the earth, it's used in and transmitting station for frequencies and uh, negative frequencies that affect feminine energies foremost. As you know, full moon affects them very much. Right. So that's what I think it's used for. And, uh, but hmm. in the overall scheme of things, it's more minor matrix than Saturn. I believe, but still important. Right. right okay, right. so getting back to uh, singularity in the afterlife um, is if we go to the tunnel of light, then we are also going to reincarnate. And because most people believe in karma, they have to, they contract to work out the karma. And that loop's been going on and on and on. Um, so one of the, uh, I don't remember exactly what it's saying. So one of the, the main points why it's in, important to understand your options at the afterlife is if you choose to go to the light and uh, be re reprogrammed and recontract and have your memory wiped and take on a new incarnation, you'll be brought up in a society that is heavily technological as a child and you won't have any reference to what it was like before there was all this technology and so it's much more likely you'll be caught up in the singularity and uh, that is dangerous in my opinion because once you enter singularity it's going to be very difficult to get out of it if, unless impossible because uh, they have really full control of you at that point where you merge with machines and you're 
you're a group consciousness and you don't have your individuality, you're not thinking as an individual, you're thinking as a group mind, and your information is coming in as a group mind. So you don't have that reference to be outside of the group or even think outside of the group. And that to me is very scary. Um, I believe the whole, the reason why we are individual is because the original creatrix that designed this universe wanted us to experience it individually, not to merge back to source. And of course you're not merging with the true source, you're merging with the source that conquered what the original source created. And so his intentions are really not benevolent. So when I investigate everything, I never see anything that is benevolent that this source has done for humanity. There's always hidden motives and wanting to use humanity to the maximum as, as food or, or as energy or in some way, even if it's spiritual. So as a host, <clears throat> big red flag goes up to me in, 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 in wanting to merge with source, that whole concept, because you're merging with the wrong source. <laughs> right. And that's how even has to do the law of one and what all these channels are talking about and, and new age spirituality as well. I just have a big red flag around that. Although you're getting many benefits from doing that. Um, and of course they say that's the next step is is becoming one with source and losing your individuality. Well, I think the main reason why source wants us to be individual is it wants to experience us through us as individuals. Yes. Yes. It, no. So it's really opposite. It's quite a, um, I'm not saying one is right and one is wrong, but I think the, Earth and spiritual matrix is all about merging with source. And I believe outside of the matrix, it's all about the and, and, individual. And this, the individual is still connected to source, fully connected to source. And it could be whatever, it could be like a creator God. It could be whatever it wants to be, whatever form it wants to be. It could be physical or it could be non-physical and uh, have the benefits of so wherever it wants to be in whatever dimension or planet or star system and, and still retain full memories of all of that, which is quite incredible when you think about it. Right. Is source um, the void or, or the car like you're... Like you're, you mentioned. Well, it. yeah, it's it's all of that. I mean, the ka is the void, and it's also uh, it's physicality, and it's also it's a lot of things. It's everything. It's it's the real universe. We although the universe we live in is a part of the real universe. It's It's like a bubble in the real universe. It's quarantined. So we're very. We can't go outside of it and experience fully what we are. And we can't connect to our memories of our soul or our over soul. And so it acts like a prison. And that's why it's the popular term prison planet is really quite true. Right, right, <laughs> really, right, right. But it goes beyond, beyond this planet. It's a, the whole solar system is a prison solar system. I, I know that Wes, Wes Penry uh, seems to talk about the, as if the, the universe, all the planets, et cetera, are in the void. And I don't know if it's, if it's true, but if that, does that imply that um, the void is nothingness and that it is something other than fullness? And uh, um, Well, in a sense, yeah, it's all, it, it all emptiness 
form comes out of emptiness and emptiness comes out of form. So it's, it's, it's very true in that respect. Right. But is it, is it beyond time and space? Because, because time and space in a linear way uh, in our dimension seems to be a prison. I mean, our well, yeah, uh, I could say that the time and space, the linear time and space we, sp we experience on the earth is part of the matrix. Once we get outside of the matrix, it, it's not linear in that sense. And uh, it's, it's a whole different concept of time. And that's also one way to control us is through time, with linear time. Right. It's very but clever. It would, but it would be non-duality, right? Um, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm not sure of that. I, I think there still could be duality. And I, can, I, I think there would be both, duality right. and non-duality, depending right. on what realm you're in. But there, there's light, there is light and darkness. There's false light and false, false darkness, and there's true light and true darkness. It's, they're two different things. And they complement each other, but they're not, uh, it's not like it's manipulated and false. All right, All right. The difference. So, yeah, there would be duality. All right. But it's right. not the same as what we have here, where everything is made to uh, be manipulated and false. Right. So, so there, there's no, there would be no real, uh, really no difference between uh, unlimited light and what we perceive as darkness, since we, we can only see what we perceive and the frequencies above, such as pure light or below, that may be dark to us. Um, and some Indians say that um, uh, in the void, say that the void is both light and dark, or neither light nor dark. <laughs> so it's beyond. It's 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 beyond that it seems you know and um, or maybe it's it could be called a clear light something that's transparent or I think invisible. It, I think it's whatever we believe it is <laughs> right 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 exactly right or oh, no color at all because we're, uh, we're we're creator beings once we're right. we're fully create we're creator beings here in in the matrix still but within confines but outside of the matrix there, there's no confines so. Whatever we think we are, we are really, uh, and uh, uh, so that would be the void as well, or whatever we think the void is, it is. Right, right. So, so, so according to the more unlimited we are, the more unlimited it is. Right, right. That that's one of the the keys to get out, get out of uh, any after death, um, right. any after life. I'm sorry. Um, let's go back to the car because you, you you described you described it as the the rest of the 96 percent universe, also known as the car K H A A. Uh, yeah, and, and, it's the 100 percent universe. It's just that part we're in is isolated from the other 96 percent. Right. We, everything is the car. So dark matter, it's creation. dark. That's another word for the creation. <laughs> right, right. Okay, so it's dark matter and energy, which... Um, yeah, it co corresponds to the 96% dark matter and dark energy, which, sci which scientists say corresponds, which also corresponds to the dormant DNA that was deactivated or jumped in. Yeah, so, well, it correlates. So, so as we activate DNA, we would have access to the more and more of that aspect of the universe which some of us do to some some extent yeah which so more than others is that why we seem to be confined our multi-dimensional right well multi-dimensional but in our limited uh incarnation here uh, we seem to be confined under a dome uh inside a a box or or a fishbowl <laughs> and um with you know the nasa scam and hoax uh and the lies that we can we can perceive today um or uh, seem to confine humanity to a, a, a non um a, a, a no exit uh of of this 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 truman show that that seems to be more and more filled with with fake false characters uh, you know, non-player characters, non-playing characters, um, PNG, uh, PNGs, um, um, 
NPCs, sorry, NPCs, um, and non-player characters uh, in the Matrix. Um, so if if a majority around us is our our soulless beings, um, which some say they are, um, how can a critical mass, collective mass, um, you know, among us? Can can overturn any of the Archon's agenda, or 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 better our demise uh, in this on, on this linear timeline. Right. <laughs> Very good question. I I myself used to think, you know, only a few years back, that we enough of us could get together, we could save the planet. But at this point, with all the confusion going around and um, and everything and a lot of the what i thought were good guys were were also trapped here as well and you know some people think the ets are here to save us but the ets that are here are all part of enki's minions <laughs> right. as far as i could say you can't get in 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 here that easily I, yeah there's some holes in the grid that people could sneak in but for the most part any ets you know about are going to be Yankees minions under, even if they think they're doing good, and even if they are under the illusion they're trying to rescue us, that's they're all part of the the matrix, or they couldn't be here, because it's it's not it's part of the of the Orion law that you can't you can't inter, intervene with free will, and the way they see it now is that humans have sided with Enki, and we're part of his agenda fully. So I can't just go and rip us out of the matrix. <laughs> right, right, right. So it's okay. sort of a, a cult weaponization of light uh, that seems to trap us down here, you know, keep us trapped here. Um, yeah, uh, they, they perfected the traps here to be that almost everything you can conceive of is a trap. And it's very cleverly hidden, a lot of these traps. Some are obvious, but... But even if you see a lot of the traps, there are still hundreds more you probably don't see. <laughs> um, they're very right. clever. They're, they're, and one of, one of the um, traps is also trying to save the planet. I don't think you, at this point that's even possible. Um, I think now it's an individual thing. You have to save yourself. And maybe if you're good, you can convince a few other people to save themselves. But I don't see any way to to get out of the matrix uh, as as a group. I just don't see that. And um, the extent of mind control and traps is so pervasive. And because uh, they're trying to convince us that soul groups are are there to help you know each other uh, within within the soul the soul group. But it, yeah, it, it all looks like a secret society to me. Uh, in, in yeah, mind. I agree. I agree. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, they, they, they want us to waste our time trying to save the planet. <laughs> it, it's a, there's a lot of people trying to save the planet, not realizing, having no idea how to, what the matrix is and how to escape it. And because they think that's all there is, it's the Earth matrix or the spiritual matrix. Um, but that's all part of the trap too. So now I really wanted to, to discuss how you can exit the matrix because yes. the only way I know is at death. Um, because um, they still need your free will no matter what. I mean, when you die, of course, you're disoriented and you're used to going into the light and you have a great experience doing that. But on the other hand, if you know that's a trap um, and no one can convince you otherwise because there'll be many beings that'll come to you and say, oh, please come with us. If you're aligned with whoever being you are, they'll, they'll, they know what you're thinking. They know your whole history. They know everything about you. So they could be very persuasive and find the beings, whether they're friends or Jesus or whoever it is, to put, they could shape shift to any form and say, hey, come with me, I'll guide you, I'll help you. And if you think you're not going, they'll they convince much, you that 
What? They can, but they can pretty much hijack your life review as well and answer yes. some screen memories. <laughs> Absolutely. They, yeah. Whatever tricks they play here, they can now play there as well. They're all tricksters. They're, they know the art of deception. and uh, you know, It's like going to court, you know, the judge and you, you're trying to, you're against a government agency or a bank. The judge is, gets his money from the government and the bank, so he's gonna decide on in their favor. And what, however he has to, he has to decide in their favor. So he knows all the tricks in the court to trap you. Mm. So it's kind of like that in the afterlife. Right, right. The karmic so, lords know exactly what buttons to push to trap you. <laughs> So you don't want to go there at any price because then you're trapped. So if you don't, you choose not to go to the light. Um, you have to be, before, before you die, you have to be 100% sure because you don't, you're not going to have the time to think it through and get to that 100% um, convic conviction with such strong intent that nothing can convince you otherwise. And basically, hold on one second. Yeah. So basically, um, you would, um, the options you have are going, what, that, what I know of now is going, jumping through a hole in the grid, just kind of like jumping into a black hole. And they will probably persuade you that you'll be annihilated if you do that. And, uh, there could be a lot of, if there's any, if you have any fear around it, um, that could turn you back. But I believe that if you, that if you jump through that hole in the grid and not be persuaded, which is going into the dark, not the light, um, then you would, you would exit the matrix. Hmm. All right. All right. Black holes. Um, and And then um, I, I believe you would immediately have act, get aligned back to who you really are and you would know how to navigate in that reality because you've been that before, of course. Hmm. I mean, and, yes. and, and far, as far as time, your, your earth incarnations is like the blink of an eye compared to what you are in time before that. So. All right. <clears throat> so, Michael, um, you, you have some techniques um, to disclose to us about the afterlife, uh, well, the death process, uh, entrapment, and how to get past the, the, the tunnel of light or, or get past the, um, I, I guess, the archons um, entrapment situation where they, they, they wait for you in the, uh, you know, after the life review or during the life review and, and um, they try to get you to reincarnate. Well, the first step would be to have a complete understanding of the matrix and a knowingness of what exists outside the matrix. Um, you have to have 100% conviction, otherwise you could be persuaded to uh, go to the light. Um, you have to have an absolute strong intent before your death, so you're, in, you're not going to have really be in a space to think about it. Once you, I mean, the dying is traumatic enough, the de death process, and you have to be 100% sure before the death process of what you want to do. Otherwise, there'll be so many ways they can trick you into going into the tunnel. Um, it's familiar for one, you've done it, I don't know how many countless lifetimes, but it would be seem like the most familiar and easy thing to do and a pleasurable thing. Jumping, the alternative, of course, is jumping as a hole in the grid or it may appear as a black hole to go through it. And of course, you don't know exactly how it's going to be because you haven't done that. And there isn't any 
one alive who can tell you about that, of course. Where is this many near-death experience people who talk about the tunnel and how pleasurable it is and how great it was and not wanting to come back. Um, so there's, there's a fair amount of promotion about going into the tunnel of light being a good thing to do, whereas jumping into a black hole is not being promoted. <laughs> and it, it could seem kind of scary. And I advise my listeners to check out the my interviews with uh, Wayne Bush about that yes. and his his uh, website about the uh, end years and the tunnel of light and you know mm. much more uh, things about the the afterlife and, and the death process. Um, yes, but if it's you have to have a plan basically before you 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 go uh, on to um, well losing your incarnation here. And move on right. to a, another process. Process, and right? And it's absolutely essentially thoroughly understand what is the matrix and what it's all about, which I had attempted to do. But it's there's so much more detail to it, and um, the best source I found was the West Penner papers, um, because he goes into it in a detail level that um, was by over 5,000 pages so far, I think. Um, you have to know, thoroughly understand the motives of the characters, the God being in particular, being Lucifer Enki and, and his desire for revenge against the Orion Queen, who was the create, original creator of this reality. So understanding Tiamat, which was the original creation, which was later modified by Ferengi to be quite the opposite of what it was originally intended. And, and that is his, his source of revenge, is to take the creation where the spirit of Tiamat, which is his mother, the goddess of creation, which is still in the earth today and perverting it in every way possible you could conceive of. <laughs> Turning everything inside out and backwards, essentially, from the way it was. So that everything is a trap here. And of course, he justifies it saying we need this intense polarity to evolve. And it's funny, I heard this channeling, where Luci a rare channeling where Lucifer came in and said he has to play 98% negative in order to um, create the necessary karmic changes needed for evolution on this planet. And of course he's saying that it's his father who is instructing him to play the negative and he's doing it out of love for humanity. <laughs> but it's, that's Lucifer's deceptive nature. Um, very cunning, clever. He's, he's, first of all, he is the God being who's designed it all, for one. And whoever he's portraying as his father is, is, not, is really himself. Secondly, do we need all that intense negativity that's going on on this planet to evolve and I, I don't agree with that at all. We can evolve in a much uh, more benevolent situation. Yes, absolutely. The lords of karma, you have to ignore them basically at death. Uh, um, you can't ignore them here because we are trapped in their game, uh, inside their game. So you have to some, somewhat play their game. Um, but, you know, in the after death process, after life process, you, you can choose, I guess, um, in the um, in, in an instant, uh, at the right moment, in the right timing, if you still have your consciousness and memories uh, unwiped <laughs> and not cleaned out yet, if you have learned the process during your your life your lifespan, um, that this is you know all those settings are pretty hard to come by when you mm. look at, at the people who are in in the in the, the life ending. Um, uh, 
session that are m mostly horrible and they have disease and they're they're weakened by their you know their health and um you know they're in the survival mode and and i'm not even talking about alzheimer uh disease. so that's pretty much you know geared towards mm. erasing the, our memories while we're still in our trapped in our bodies right absolutely well i question the whole concept of karma to begin with because um are we really even getting rid of karma and is it really our karma <laughs> In one sense, we agree to it, and that makes it real, of course. We do have karma in the sense that we agreed to it, and we actually sign on the dotted line before we come here to work out certain karma. So it's real in that sense, but it's not real that we really have karma to work out. You know, it's a trick. It's a clever trick. And if you realize you don't have karma to work, really work out that that is all put on to you really <laughs> and right. um you'll never work it out because every incarnation probably had more karma um and then there's group karma as well mm -hmm. uh, i don't i don't i see that just being a huge distraction and another way to get you trapped to reincarnate and, right. and uh, yes the fact that we live such short lifespans is another way to uh, keep us from figuring out what's going on in the matrix because it's it's such a short span and in the meantime we're struggling to earn a living and survive on this planet and go through developing ourselves edu education and uh, there's so much in society that keeps us running around on a treadmill. It's very hard to free ourselves enough to really think of deeply about what's really going on. So, Except they, for the upper echelon um, uh, archon minions who don't have that much trouble to um, you know, get by financially and, and with, with power, um, power positions in society and in politics and, and you know, so forth so they oh, promise i don't think they have a lot of time either because they're right. too busy doing their thing to right. govern humanity um they may know certain things but they certainly don't understand the matrix either <laughs> only right. the ones at the very top do and those you never hear about them they're not names you would know and those are the over the uh, overlords that are the fallen angels and they're you know able to shape shift and appear as right take right, any right. form and they have a lot of abilities beyond what we would be capable of probably um what was i gonna say yeah and then there's the whole thing about sickness disease and uh cancer in particular is what, one in two men and one in three women today. It's quite huge. And almost every disease you could think of is getting greater. It's, we're not curing diseases. Um, we have more and more pollution and radioactivity. And if you look at everything, it's, it's on the whole getting worse, not better. <laughs> right. Right, and most most viruses are uh, man-made and in, in military, in military mm. labs, and uh, basically they all, um, a lot of them have vaccines for them, <laughs> so, which is kind of weird. <laughs> you know. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the more you look into all the stuff, the more it seems really bad, <laughs> negative. Right. right, and sometimes, like you said, ignorance is bliss. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Yeah, but it doesn't keep the uh, the sky from falling over your head. Um, <laughs> so, um, you, well, getting, you know, yeah. getting back to the death process, I believe that is also your way out of the matrix. I, it's of course um, a choice, and you, and in order to make that choice, you have to really understand that choice what you're getting into when you leave the matrix or what um, I believe is, I mean, I can only say 
from my um, knowingness level, from a deeper level, I do believe we're deliberately being disconnected from our soul and part of that is with the memory wipe. Well, a large part of that is the memory wipe because our soul contains all our memories. And if we had all our memories, we couldn't be duped, could we? No. We, we would know. But we get uh, duped. We, we in, look in... throughout history. We would know the true history because we lived it. And uh, there's no way they could do what we're doing. It's only because they cut us off from our the other aspects of ourself through the memory wipe um, that they could get away with that. So I believe when we exit the matrix, we would immediately be connected to our soul and and imagine having all that memory, not just on earth, but outside of earth. That's huge, just so huge. We would become a whole other being. We would become so, so wise beyond not only our whole earth experiences, which is vast, but our experiences throughout the universe. And of right. course, I believe we exist beyond this universe. So, but our soul is the vehicle that we travel throughout this universe. We co-create that soul as, as a way to travel in this universe. But it's been hijacked, of course, by the, uh, the whole getting trapped in the matrix. So we lost our connection to our real soul. We have a fragment of our soul that operates here, but that fragment doesn't, except in a rare, more rare circumstances, connect with people who have memory, still have that memory. And even I doubt, I don't know if that is the true memory or it's a memory programmed either. It's hard to know. Because they do have the capacity to program memories. Right. Um, are they are they the true memories? I don't know. And people who say they remember their past lives, I'm talking about. Right, right, right. And um, do you think it's safe? Because I guess it's not only the um, the archons, minions who who claim that we need to experience this this intense duality based and trauma based uh, reality in order to evolve. But what is evolution uh, really? If if it's if it's coming back here. Uh, a certain amount of lives uh, in order to be able to suffer quietly mm. or silently mm. or, or you know I don't I don't understand what the evolution is all about you know and, and the ascension trap and frequency um, ascension is also a trap um, mm. The, mm. The, you know it, it promises you that you once you've uh, you know, you, you only eat uh, vegetables and uh, you, you follow a certain diet and you go and, and the spiritual um, um, uh, guidance uh, and, and you, you, you know, you follow a, a certain path uh, or dogma, uh, you'll become as ascended, you know, in matter um, inside 3D or evolving into 4D, but 4D is the astral. So you're, you're still not out of the matrix. Um, what if we were, Uh, only DNA signatures, and we were made to believe all this galactic history. Um, and uh, in order to um, uh, value ourselves uh, as much better than you know computer game uh, DNA signatures, just just like in in that wow. episode of Black Mirror, you know where the guy um, uh, takes some samples DNA samples of his uh, uh, workmates because he has a revenge. Uh, uh, he has something against them. So he traps them into uh, into a video game in, 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 on, in, mm. on the um, Enterprise uh, ship. I forgot what the name the name of it was. USS Callister, I think it was the name of the episode. It, it was. It made you think of well, what if it were the case? And uh, yeah. you know, yeah, you brought up a number of really good questions. So if I don't answer them all, remind me. Okay, we'll start with the first about evolution. And, right. Um. Yeah, there's definitely evolution in the matrix. Um, but you have to understand that before who we were before as the original human on Tiamat, we were way more evolved than we are now. So we have uh, 
de-evolved in terms of what we were. So yes, you, the evolution on in the matrix is is real, and there's uh, that's definitely going on. And if you choose to remain in the matrix, um, there's an evolutionary path. Although the next step seems to be toward singularity technology, which also ties into ascension, which is part of that. So yes, there is an ascension in the matrix, but uh, outside of the matrix, it's, it's kind of like, it has no meaning because we've already ascended once we're outside the matrix, truly ascended. I mean, we'd be like equivalent to an, a creator God outside of the matrix. It's really hard to even conceive of that because I mean, we're very, I mean, the people who are here are very wise beings. What if we had all our soul memories back, we would be incredibly wise. We'd be, you know, esteemed teachers in the universe <laughs> and esteemed creators, almost like creator gods. Um, uh, How did we get duped uh, into coming here in the first place, do you think? I'm not exactly sure, but I can imagine that Enki was very pers persuasive, <laughs> persuasive in saying that if we experience limitation, it would be a unique experience and experiencing somehow we were of the understanding that we could get at, we could get out from that at any time. But I think once we went in, we never came out. None of us came out actually. And uh, we're still here after 400,000 some odd years. Right. And that would have been after he engineered the, the first human prototypes uh, back with ISIS. Around four hundred thousand years ago, four to five. Um, not exactly sure. So Saturn and the moon. So, however, we were we tricked. What? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I was talking about Saturn. I don't know exactly how we were tricked. I I don't have those memories, but I can imagine how we were. That's all I could say. Right. Um, well, blaming us for something, well, make us feel guilty. Um, <laughs> shaming us, I mean, the, the shame game seems to work in every dimension or in any, any state of duality that we, we can be drawn in. Um, mm. Barbara Marciniak, I was, I was telling you earlier uh, in, on the show um, about her moon theory. Um, I, f I found it back. Um, she said, the moon is a satellite that was constructed. It was built and anchored outside Earth's atmosphere as a mediating and monitoring device, a supercomputer or eye in the sky. It affects all life forms on this planet beyond what you can currently grasp in your history. There are references to two moons around the Earth. I don't know what you think of that. Well, I agree with everything she said, and I don't know about the two moons. I've never heard that before, or what the second moon is. But definitely, yeah, the moon is would be used. Um, obviously, it's being used. Just the way it rotates with one side showing is, is an anomaly that it exactly eclipses the sun. That would have to be a, an incredible anomaly. And... Uh, there are many more anomalies um, with its placement and its composition being hollow. They know it's hollow. Um, and uh, there are people who have traveled to the moon who also, like George Kavasilis, who has a great story about his experiences on the moon. Right, so, out of body or out of body or? No. Um, I I think it was physical. Okay. I'm pretty sure you said it was physical. 
was it during um, an abduction or? Yeah, he was abducted to the moon, but he he was able to overcome the abduction and then encounter beings on the moon who were, who were running things. Right. I don't want to go into that because that's something. Yeah, I mean, if people wanted to research George Kavasilis, I highly recommend him. He's his work is brilliant, and. He's had many ET experiences and, um, and is so jump in, source, also a great source about the matrix. So jumping in, into black holes uh, is a solution, right, after death. Um, well, that is something I decided to do. I know Wes Penra also advocates that and is uh, several out-of-body experiencer people who taken a look at that and had a glimpse outside the matrix, but they're pulled back because it's apparently you can't just go outside the matrix. And they, they said also about going through a hole in the grid or like a black hole. Um, Would it be easy to identify, you think, in a glimpse of a, of a Second or millisecond. I believe. Yeah. I believe once you're once you've passed away, um, it would become you you would able to see that there is a hole in the grid, and that you would have a choice because you move by thought, and where wherever whatever you think is is so happens like in a dream almost, or an out of body experience, and so you could do that. You right. could go through the hole in the grid, or and it would appear as blackness, not light. What do you think of people, uh, mediums, and and psychics who communicate with um, with uh, I guess deceased people? Um, are they real people? Are they just signatures? Uh, are they just entities in the astral? Um, that play with the archons to maintain the the hard disk. Of, of, of the matrix um, alive and, and, you know, and people hopeful that they'll, they'll join their relatives once they're, they're, uh, they go to the afterlife? Uh, I'm not an expert on that by any means, but my feeling is from having read some things about it that people are actually communicating with these beings on some level and some of the deceased come to them while they're in the physical. So I do believe there is contact and that it's possible. Yes, absolutely. Um, there's a lot of co contact going on between the third and fourth dimensions, so why not? Right, right. But they're actually trapped inside within the matrix though. Yeah, well, yeah. everything in the afterlife is within the matrix, so yes. Right. Unless you're what, what it would be much harder and, and much rarer is if you have contact with any beings outside of the matrix. I would say that's also possible, but I don't hear much about that. I just don't know. And you never know for sure whether it is a real connection or not. I, I, I mean, since I, ha I have no experience with that, I don't know. Um, so is it is it but a the, definite... the being the being the the spirit of Earth is is although she is within the matrix she's also outside the matrix because she is the goddess so in a sense if you're contacting the spirit real spirit of Earth that would be both inside and outside the matrix right and I and I also believe when you're accessing your multi-dimensional self you're accessing accessing that outside the matrix. And so there are parts of you, obviously, that are outside the matrix that you could contact, or you have limited contact, I would say, but not, I don't know, uh, I, I just don't know if it's enough to get you outside of the matrix. I never heard of someone just leaving the matrix while in the physical. Not right. to my knowledge, anyway. Yeah, your 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 cosmic um, uh, um, well self or higher self, I'd, I'd say, outside the matrix could uh, maybe give you get you some help, give you some help. 
um, you know, to discern sometimes. That's, that's what some people say. Um, I believe that. I do believe that. Um, I, I mean, why would, ha why would you even have the desire to leave the matrix unless there was a part of you that you could access outside of it? Even though you may not be clear about it, um, there's a knowingness about it, obviously. All right. That's what um, motivates me personally. So once you've um, overcome the trap, the, the death trap, well, in, in the afterlife process, and you get out of the matrix, where would you want to go? Where would you wish to go? And um, would you create uh, a new dimension for you, yourself and an environment that's suitable um, for more benevolent um, experience? Or would you remain in the void and... and remain still or would you join another creation or you know what what are the options that you think it's unlimited option because you're a creator being so whatever reality you want to create you can create and you would not be limited like you are here um there's no uh control grid around you keeping you from going wherever you want so you would be able to nano travel, which is travel by thought to anywhere in the universe. And you could become anything you wanted. If you wanted to be a dragon being or whatever. <laughs> uh, my, I think the first place I would desire to go would be to Orion. Uh, just because, because of, I, I believe that's a great place to be, and um, and I, I mean, you have the potential to go to any type of university in the universe, depending on what level you're at, and um, it, it's hard to say. I think it's indiv it's highly individual because of where people are, where they came from, who they were before. I just believe that you could, uh, you know, create whatever reality you want to, and you could co-create with other beings. Um, Although you mentioned it in your book at the end, um, in the final chapter, I think that we we cannot. Now you're you're totally convinced that we cannot create. We'll bring heaven on earth and create heaven on earth, given the circumstances. We cannot create heaven on earth. Yeah, we yeah. cannot. Um, we have we have maybe fifty percent ability to create our own reality, and within that, we can create a sort of a very nice reality, but it will still be limited, and 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 we still have the aging process here for right now, anyway. Um, so I, I do know there are beings that create uh, quite a blissful experience here. So I, I'd say it's possible, especially, um, I'm particular, there's particular spiritual beings that have created, uh, that merge with source that have a very blissful experience. I don't know if that's, I don't feel that's my particular path, um, but it is possible to have experience here doing mm -hmm. that. But I believe that's still within the matrix. Yeah. Yeah, within the matrix. Right, right. Well, what do you think of NDR's uh, stories? Um, are they reliable? I mean, they're, you know. What stories? NDR's, you know, near death experiencers. Oh, near death experiences. Okay. Um, I believe they are, yeah. Mm -hmm. But it is possible that uh, they could be mind controlled as well. I mean, I don't leave that out. But I mean, there's so many that uh, have similarities to them. That doesn't mean that all of them couldn't be mind controlled. <laughs> to some extent. But I, I do believe 
I, I believe that there's a lot of truth coming from that. Right, right. Precisely. Near death experiences. Yeah. yeah, precisely. And that's that's why um, you also consider the possibility that the galactic history may also be deceitful and, you know, maybe somewhat uh, warped or, or twisted um, since we have been lied to by NASA, Nazi, Nazi NASA and NASA and, and by many more astronomical figures in history imposing their vision of Earth and the stars and the universe for centuries. Um, um, and and there are also ET channel history of Earth uh, that are not too reliable either. Um, so, at, you know, do you, you consider the yeah? I agree. I agree one hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all the records would be altered to suit uh, the portrayal of history by Enki so that he looks like he's the god being it has to um reinforce that that he was the creator of all that is um and he's the original creator of the whole universe which is a lie <laughs> right the goddess created this universe and he he actually just altered this creation he probably altered many other creations that he conquered as well throughout this universe. So he is a creator. He was trained to be a creator, to take over from his mother. So he does have the abilities, <laughs> obviously, but he's using it in a very underhanded way because he's, he, his, you have to understand his motive is revenge against his mother and his father and his brother brother Prince and Leo, his father, Khan and Leo, or Anu he's sometimes referred to, um, or King and Leo. Mm -hmm. And those are the three main beings that are the thorn in Enki that he wants revenge against. But if, if Enki is so, a real, real bad guy, which is which is case, um, yeah, he's, why he's would the bad Enlil... guy of bad guys. Yes, uh, but Enlil is not a better guy, so there's there's no good. No, he that, is. That he is a... No, no, no. Now I got to correct. That's what I always thought until I wrote, what, read the West Penra papers. All right. And I even have it in his, my book that I suspected that it was Enlil and Enki, but I couldn't. I wasn't sure. I you know I didn't. I was confused. I said I was confused on that, but now I'm. I'm pretty certain that Enlil and King Enlil are the good guys, along with the goddess, and it's Enki who's the bad guy. Well, Enki is is the one who rebelled against them, against against the Orion Empire. All right. Because he was essentially he wasn't uh, he was denied heirship to the throne. Yeah, but his father is Anu, right? Yeah, but Anu Anu agreed to the peace treaty and he was uh, true to his word. He didn't rebel. Why would he rebel when you think about it? He was the king of the Orion Empire. Why, why rebel? That's as high a position as you can have. <laughs> right. Yeah, it not make it, any sense. Yeah, but it feels like we, we have like a, a catch-22 choice uh, just like in politics, you have the, uh, you know, uh, uh, Satan on one side, and the sat satanic archetype on one side, and on the other side, you have Lucifer, which is the false light on the other side. So it's just like in politics, you don't have much choice. I mean, there's no good guy. They just play good cop, bad cop, but it, it's the choice between Satan and, and, and Lucifer, and it's not, it's not really a fair choice, or it's no choice at all. And it, well, know, yeah. Exactly. Well, Lucifer represents the light side and Marduk, Satan, re represents the dark side. But the light side seems benevolent and even the beings that he uses are, think, believe they're benevolent and believe they're doing benevolent things. And in all intents and purposes are benevolent in terms of uh, this reality. So 
yeah, they're benevolent in terms of this reality, but because they don't understand they're being used, <laughs> that's what makes it so bloody clever. Because people believe what they're doing is helping. And in terms of this reality, it is helping. <laughs> right, right. Um, but, you know, what, what archetype is, is, is Enlil associated with? I really don't know what you mean by archetype. Um, or religious figure. Or religious what? spiritual figure or religious figure. Oh. I see. Okay. He, he, he's, I mean, he's simply the one who helped co-create Tiamat with his mom. And so he's, he's also Archangel Michael, second in command. So when you go to uh, see all those pictures of, Ar of Archangel Michael, the sword, that's portraying Enlil. And, um, of course, that's the one who's the defender of Orion as well. So he's defending the truth. That's, his, that's, his, that's what you mean by archetype, defender of truth. Right, 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 right. Um, and, and, and just law, just law. You know, it's funny that our legal system, I've gotten to know it pretty well because I've been in a lot of legal battles with the banks in particular. Um, it seems the way it's written is, is just law, but it, the legal language, legalese is um, very deceptive. A word that would mean one thing to you is completely the opposite in legal language. So uh, what you think are being your given rights are actually taking away your rights. <laughs> right. and, and the way it's all set up is, is so clever because it's made to look like the judges uh, um, is being playing fair and that, that you're on a fair playing field, but it's anything but. It's, it's, it's just, it's all yeah. show and uh, deception. Yeah, just like the relationship between Shiva and Saturn, you know, and, uh, and also Kali, the uh, Indian goddess, you know, is associated with Well, Saturn. let me interrupt you. Shiva, Shiva is Enki too, you know. Right, okay, right. Mm -hmm. same, same character, Brahma, Enki. <laughs> right, 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 right. And uh, uh, the feminine character is Arrestigal, that you mentioned. Kali? Right. Kali. Um, so what do you think of the Hindus' um, belief that uh, this is a necessary experience on an intense duality on earth in order to access some level of wisdom uh in order to be able to get get out and not you know um i guess um, there's um there's also uh i think a a belief among hindus um that we do, we i mean in reincarnation we don't have to uh, it's not closed uh, it's not a closed up belief that in a, in the hindu conception um that it's 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 a mandatory experience according to them but we uh, in order to access a higher state of uh, consciousness but in their tradition um they consider nine nine cycles of existence of lives uh you know nine lives <laughs> in, in, it's like a, a good average uh number amount of of, of uh, reincarnations to access a um the necessary with wisdom to to get out of the matrix basically this this varies uh, you know according to the individual of course but milarepa i don't know if you've heard of uh, uh, it's 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 a uh, buddha another buddha mm -hmm. uh, well known buddha uh, has uh, reached this level of wisdom um in order to get to the next stage uh in one life in you know one single life um do you think this is a necessary step uh, to get through earth um, in this context in order to evolve? Because this, the Hindus say that. You're talking about having to experience the intense negativity and overcome it. On earth, right. Mm. Um, 
so there's a there's an incredible wisdom in the Buddhist teachings and in the Vedas. And but you have to understand the Vedas were written by Enki and people who Enki appointed to to write it. Basically, he wanted it written that way. And um like all the different religions, they all support the creator in some way uh, as being a patriarchal creator, Enki. Um, and there's, a, there's, you see, the real, we're only used to this, re, what we call reality or our universe. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of wisdom in it from these teachers. They are, uh, incredibly wise and you could get a lot of benefit from them but that's always in terms <laughs> of still keeping you in the matrix right you already have that wisdom in you already because of who you are and what you are so it, it's like um you don't really need it because you already are that you know it's kind of and you're way more than that. <laughs> right, right, exactly. So That's... all you really need to do is exit the matrix to get to be that. Or if you want to stay in the matrix, you could slowly evolve over time and start to get that wisdom, which many people are doing. And it's a, it's, it benefits those people, of course. Yes, there's a lot of benefit in terms of the matrix. And it's yeah. called evolution, ascension. Um, yeah, worthiness. Worthiness yeah. Is, is basically their. Uh, I mean, they, their their false escape game because um, you have to be worthy of something in order to reach a level. It's 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 like a video game. It's it's you reach a level and then they give you another level. Uh, mm. Each and then another. Exactly. One, another exactly. One. <laughs> yeah, it's ongoing levels and levels right. and initiations and levels <laughs> and, and all you all, and, you all you learn here down here is 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 how to cope with trauma <laughs> basically well, there's there's two ways of going one is and uh, one is the spiritual path and that's to evolve and become more spiritually evolved and then graduate the third dimension and then into the fourth dimension and then there's many levels there to keep going and going and you become a spiritual teacher on or ascended master or angelic being spirit guide there's many options on that level to do those kind of things but you're still in the matrix and you're still working for you're still working under the auspices of of the the god being do you think there are uh, beings who are able to escape, exit the matrix from the 4D level, from the astral realm, uh, if they, they get their consciousness or memory back, um, maybe after, after they try to wipe, wipe it out? Um, and um, I wouldn't know that really. Uh, yeah. I suspect, what I suspect is that, because um, uh, a lot of higher beings say they don't have any free will when you achieve a higher much higher state they realize there's no such thing as free will and that to me tells me they um they're under a contract with um enki to do a certain job and once they fulfill that contract then they they graduate and they're given another contract but they 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 don't have the free will and that means they're not free to leave because they're under contract right right um, I do don't do you know whether they come to a realization and can break the contract and exit the matrix from the right. 4D or not. That I don't know. Right, right. Yeah, so in case you you miss the exit, you know, in, in the afterlife uh, death process, um, we don't know if you're going to be able to escape and not get recycled here uh, under a binding contract that you, well, you, know, the you know. Mm. Yeah, like I mentioned before, the big danger is the is the um, singularity, which includes mm. ascension and all the spiritual disciplines seem to merge into that as well, and the harvest, all of that. Right, 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 right. 
Um, yeah, I think Jason Rice said it, that the Draco's uh, AI and the Archons, you know, are the uh, the, the string. They they pull the strings uh, and the, uh, the false flags and all the um, negative events that are taking place down here. Um, and they and they could all very well be the same beings that you meant all those three you mentioned. Right, right, exactly. I, I would term the overlords and, and or the alien intruder force. You could call them that too, or the demiurge or the fallen angels. They have many names. Or the Syrian overlords. It's a lot of them come from Sirius. Um, they're shapeshifters and they can take many forms. So I don't know if they are, I suspect they are, can be very, in an Anunnaki, they all could be the same beings. Uh, what many do you think days, of, Many names to them. During our incarnation, is there any ways to prepare ourselves to exit the matrix? Or it, it, for example, some talk about the uh, the worms being the archons uh, inside our bodies. Um, is deworming or worming or vermifuge? I don't know how you you say it in English, but um, uh, uh, another way to prepare your your DNA um, to to rid of those parasites that we have inside us. Well, I always think it's a good idea whenever you have parasites to uh, feed them in a negative way to get rid of them. But parasites in general feed off of you if, if you're in a negative state. So just by becoming more positive, you would the parasites wouldn't be able to survive. So I think it's more important just to have a positive outlook. And I, I that's an important thing to bring up is is how do you stay positive of all this negativity when you see all this negativity and understand the matrix? Because that can bring you down. And it, it's, it's hard to reckon with that the actual architecture of this matrix is malevolent. And including the being that's in charge of it. It doesn't have the best intentions for mankind. And just the fact that he re-engineered something that was so beautiful and made it so negative. <laughs> um, right. It's hard to come to ter terms of it. it. It's a vast betrayal in your being when you realize that. Because this is someone you were brought up and over many lifetimes have worshipped. So it's, it's very deep within you. And it's a program within you to do that, to worship what? this being. And yeah. most, peop most people want to avoid confronting confronting this situation. Yeah. They, you know, they, they want to turn away and you know do the uh, the, the ostrich uh, attitude. You know, bury yeah. your, head, your head in the sand. No, you don't want. It. Most people can't even look at it because it triggers um, such intense feelings that um, and it's it's like it's triggering a program that sabotages you. And you can't even deal with looking at it. It's like you can't. So it's very hard to overcome that and, and to look at it and, and take in and see things as they really are not, without making them, you know, covering it over and saying, oh, it's all good and, and just needs to be this way because that's the, it'll make us stronger in the end and it's for our benefit that it's designed this way, the universe and this reality and this matrix. But I don't believe that. I believe it's designed to, for the maximum feed <laughs> of these beings who are running the matrix. And, and so that by staying positive is a way that they cannot feed from you. So if you're a happy person, that's your best defense against parasites and everything negative. Right. Sucking your energy. So but, you know, any form of sucking your energy is parasitic, whether they're worms or, or on a spiritual yeah. level. I so, mean, uh, or, or. so yeah, they all tie in together. They're all. Uh, but but it's difficult to to remain positive if we you have uh, a little empathy left. You know, some people will say, "Well, I'm, I'd rather be selfish and not think of all 
the misery around me and on this planet and all the, the wars, genocides, uh, disease, sickness, and, and you know, self-induced uh, um, um, spiritual poverty or, or greed, <laughs> you know, and, and, um, and violence uh, and schizophrenia and, and um, demonic possession and <laughs> false flag. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and well, that's why it's so, so important to understand that you can create your reality as much as you can. If, and keep away from, you know, you can keep away from the wars and, and as much of the uh, negative energy around you by surrounding yourself with good people and, and doing things you love to do um, and nourish yourself with good food and good, as much nature around you as you can. Um, there's many things you can do to create a happy existence here. And yes, you, I mean, it's hard to live in this reality when there is so much negativity that you are also aware of and so much suffering that other people are. And to a certain extent, you're linked to all that suffering because they're all also part of you. You can't divorce yourself from other people. But, um, right. And AI, do you think AI is going to spark the the famous, uh, infamous uh, Blue Beam project. Um, you've heard of that, right? The Blue Beam project yeah. is like a NASA project. Uh, it like it might, but um, it might not too. I, I just don't know. It's possible, certainly. They have the technology to do it. So right. it's, it's a card they might play if they need to, but they don't need to play it, they won't. Uh, right now, it, it seems to me everything is going according to plan. Uh, towards singularity at that is and that's the overall major plan where everything seems to intersect spirituality included hmm. uh, when you look at all the at all the aspects of the matrix they seem to inter intersect at singularity and so that seems to be the major uh, focal point you know, when you look at the internet and 5G and uh, just where everything seems to be heading, it seems to be singularity. And the reason that why, why singularity is they want to make, merge humans with machines so they can totally control the humans. It's hard now for them to control 7 billion people on the planet. I imagine they must be staying up late at night trying to do this. <laughs> well, they don't sleep, of course. But um, with singularity, it would make it so much easier. Plus, they get the, the harvest they really want, which is the souls. They're after those souls. And that would give them total power, total control. And they can use humans as super soldiers to fight their wars wherever they want, including attacking Orion, which... Right. Yeah, but there's no certainty that they, they can actually escape and get out of the, this matrix um, and this, this, the Earth atmosphere. You know, that's the, the flat Earth uh, fishbowl theory where we, we're all trapped here and NASA is a hoax and fraud, basically, and everything that they're showing mm. us all the footage and all the acting in the in the swimming pool on board the the so-called uh, ISS uh, is, is all bogus, and you can see it. I mean, it, it, is that a another decoy to make us think that it's all a fraud and we're all stuck here while just a a, a small portion of them can actually escape from the wormholes? Yeah, absolutely. Every agency is 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 a fraud. Every agency, every council is to some extent or other is fraudulent because the matrix is based on fraud. Fraud and manipulation lies. That's what its architecture is. Our, our perception is a fraud. Uh, everything we perceive is is basically a fraud. We think well, the of creator of the creator of the matrix designed it that way. Because that's what he wanted. That's what he wanted this creation to be. So an that's why if you want to change this reality uh, and try to save the world, um, 
you have to change the, the very architecture of it. <laughs> <laughs> and that gets on the, on the, on the very level of cre the creation level. Uh, it, it, I don't know how to, I, I believe you have power to change yourself through the choice you make at death in particular. And while you're living here, you have the choice to whether you want to live a happy life or be depressed. You have that choice too. All right. So, you know, there are millions of, of humans. Uh, well, I don't know if all of them are humans, but uh, they are seeking for justice and retribution from in, from the justice system, from the court of courts of law and law courts and so forth, and and they they're gonna waste I think um, um, all their energy and fuel, uh, vital fuel, uh, and waste their lives and uh, get sick Absolutely. from it hey. for nothing because because it's not gonna happen, right? Of course, it's a great way to drain off energy again, siphon it off, right. Uh, the whole concept of draining the swamp and all that, yeah. <laughs> and imprisoning all the bad guys. <laughs> There's indictments for, I don't know, 50,000, 100,000 indictments of all the bad guys, and they're all going to go to some prisons somewhere. Uh, no. The, the online petitions are, are doing great, you know, oh. they're very successful. And, 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 You'd have you know. to put Enki in prison, and, and it's right. not going to happen. <laughs> and, if, and, and if any benevolent ETs think they could come here and and throw off all the bad guys. So uh, they have their finger on a on a switch that could blow up the planet and all the humans if they would try such a thing. Of course. All right. Right. Not only that, they'd be uh, violating free will because we've already to them we've already sided with the uh, creator. <laughs> right. So, so the the guy the Georgia Guidestones are are just a another decoy because they're not gonna yeah. then yeah. they're not gonna reduce population yeah. down to 500 millions um they need they, they're farming the human energy and i i can't see it being to their benefit to have a half a million people on this planet well it'll be half, half a billion they actually. won't have their food they would be denied their food so a huge amount of their food source i don't right. see that happening right unless unless they find a way or they have found a way to um, trap uh, a certain amount of body and, and life force inside containers and they can feed off of it for forever, you know, through AI and, 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 uh, and transhumanism. Well, they do have, they can make clones and all that. Um, but I think the best feed is they have an emotional nature that produces a lot of food, you know, negative emotions in particular. Right, 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 right. Um, do you think the um, the genders, um, the gender wars, is going to play a big a big role in the uh, the upcoming agenda that is already it's already been announced? Well, in singularity, I don't even see a gen. Uh, uh, I, there, there'll be one gender. <laughs> right, right. I, I don't I don't see sex. I, I think sex is going to be a thing of the past. And genders will think, be, become a thing of the past when we're no longer uh, biological beings. Right. Right, 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 right. But until then, yeah, they'll play the gender war uh, as much as they can because it produces more uh, food. Right. Whatever. Whenever you can produce more polarity and, and, um, and conflict, they will do that, of course. Oh, yeah. Uh, so well, the reason why I say that is why, if you have a, I mean, right now they're promoting trans, transgender people. You can, they'll give you free surgeries that cost a million dollars to change your sex. <laughs> and they're promoting transgender in general, as you know. And the reason for that is they see the future uh, human prototype as, as not being uh, one sex. So, and when you think about it, when you have a, a non-biological being, which is what they plan for sing singularity, why would they need a procreation? It wouldn't happen. 
like that. And right. first of all, you're, you're not going to ever die. You'll live forever. So what purpose does sex serve on, in those circumstances? It's just a distraction. And, and when they have a um, non-biological human, uh, they wouldn't want them to have distractions. Right. It wouldn't, yeah. serve, it wouldn't serve any purpose for them anymore. So if it doesn't serve any purpose, why would they have it? And you could see now in general, they're, they're, the lines are blurring between man, what is male and what is female in, in many, many areas. So it seems to be the trend and I expect that is the direction they want to take us. But they, they work both ways in contradiction with each other uh, as agenda. Uh, they want to erase totally the, the sex question issue out of our reality, but at the same time, they prone, um, you know, they, they, they uh, well, they advocate um, like sexual, sexual promiscuity and, and um, you know, just screwing everything out there that is possible. And also the pedophile agenda that is being pushed forward um uh, so that's crazy you know they it works both it works both ways uh, it, and it's totally inverted either way you look yeah. at it so yeah it's I really understand. designed it's really designed to make us lose our um landmarks or you know our um i don't know how to put it but you know lose our oh it confuses confuses totally in, in which way is is good to go uh you know as far as mind control is concerned it's totally confusing uh, on one side, you say, "Well, we, we you know we mentioned the depopulation, but they need us, so they they won't you know bring down the humanity, mankind to 500 million people." But then again, uh, if they find a way with AI or transhumanism to incubate and and merge uh, machines mm -hmm. and and trap our soul energy inside um, uh, uh, inside um, well immortal. Um, in mortal containers, then they can they can probably feed off of us by just making us react uh, and obey uh, and you know without question without questioning them. You know you know what I'm saying? It's it's just it's just it works both ways. See either way we look at it, they win. <laughs> well, that's how they like that. It's like in war, you know they they fund both sides. They don't necessarily care which side wins. They just want the war to. Because they feed off all the uh, horror and uh, bloodshed, <laughs> it's food for them, right? And the destruction of people's lives, and right. right. So yeah, they they always play both sides to their benefit. That's right. That's right. how they operate. Yeah, it's sort of a that way. They never lose. They always benefit. <laughs> so it's it's sort of a hopeless situation when we look at a. Uh, uh, rebel point of view, you know, and for someone who doesn't agree with this predator-based, trauma-based system, uh, mm -hmm. this archonic demiurgic system, um, you know, what? How can we fight it, or is it even worth fighting it? Um, if we we don't want to go along with the with the big club because we we ain't in it, you know, uh, we, we're we're not part of the secret societies. We're not. Um, right. We, don't, well, we don't have the. Uh, I mean, the ability or the will to to join them um, to benefit from their you know their privileges. Um, so how can we live? sort of happily among i mean in this chaos because each way you look at it either we're gonna l let them organize set up the chaos that they want or to app chaos uh or we're gonna you know uh, raise havoc and 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 um and engineer our own chaos so either way we look at it it's going to be chaos you know so which order should it's we follow? Very, it's very that's a very good question it's very difficult to you, you really, what you're saying is, is there a way to get out of the matrix or outside of the matrix while you're living here? And to some degree, you can have less of the matrix. Well, if you live in nature versus a, a city, for example, you're going to have less influences. Um, if you eat organic food versus GMO food, and you know, it's also 
but you can't really, I mean, you still have to earn a living. Right. And as soon as you're in the monetary system, you're, or financial system, you're in the matrix. You're supporting the matrix in some way, but you, it's hard to get around that. Uh, you could barter trade, but in the end, you have to spend a lot more energy to get around the matrix. So, uh, I, I understand I need to live in the matrix and I just try to do it as least as I can. That's right to participate. But I still get, I still get caught up in the red tape and government stuff, uh, like everyone else. And, uh, so yeah. How did you come about in, in your background, your personal background, um, to get interested in, in all those concerns that uh, we've been we've been discussing um, this evening? Well, I, I originally it was through the financial end I got involved. Uh, uh, bank took off of a half a million dollars of money, <laughs> basically, and I started to investigate. Uh, I was in a real estate trust. And then I started to see well, what was going on in the banks and uh, that, and I just followed the trail. And, it, and there was also a deep desire to understand why there were so many wars and what was going on. And I just followed, started connecting dots and following the trail and one thing led to another. And uh, yeah, it, it basically a lot of dot connecting and research and observation right and a strong sense that something wasn't right and trying to get to the bottom of it are you a parent you have uh, children or yeah i have a I have a child that's a lot okay. yeah okay and how do you foresee the future for our children well it's i tried to explain the matrix to my son but uh it's hard when you, he's in his early 30s. It's hard to uh, people when they're in their 30s. They don't. It's harder for them to understand what I understand because it takes some number of years. And I'm working with him over time. I'm sure he's he understands some, and over time, I'm sure he will. But right. it's harder for a younger person to understand this stuff. And especially in the future when people are more addicted to technology, it'll be even harder. Right, right. Yeah. You know, it'll turn away from nature and... Because and technology, it, part of what technology does is it keeps you away from your thinking, your mind, that, and you're, you're, you're in a, like a tunnel vision of, of technology. And also, you, you mentioned before, I never answered the question about the virtual reality, that how do we know we're not in a virtual reality? We really don't. <laughs> because right. if you imagine that the technology that these beings are using is billions of years old, and the technology we are aware of is hundreds, maybe, hundred. Um, there's no comparison to they could do things we couldn't even conceive of. And so we could very much be in a um, virtual reality simulation game, <laughs> like you said. Right. We, wouldn't, we wouldn't know. And in our fu near future, we won't know the difference either because the technology will catch up where the virtual reality will seem just as real as the reality that we so-called experience now. So it right. could be a virtual reality within a virtual reality within a virtual reality. Yeah, it's like the movie Inception with the, uh, mm. you know, the astral, the dream, dream state uh, levels. And, and, and right. um, so that's, that's, yeah, that's, that makes it uh, even more uh, challenging, but <laughs> almost impossible to, uh, we're at a turning point, don't you think, right now in, in our modern history with technology? On, on well, the linear, linear I, I, I guess you, we're accelerating for sure. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. accelerating. A, it's going into what you call like a J curve where, you know, right. every year is like 10 years before. <laughs> 
right? And and hopefully in the near future we won't have a robot like I think it was Sophia, her name was, or, or yeah, another Sophia, one yes. that said, you know, when she was asked, well, what will you do with humans in the future? And she she replied, we're going to put them in in people's zoos. <laughs> we keep keep humans in zoos. <laughs> and that's also a pun, by the way. Sophia is another name for the uh, goddess, uh, right? The mother. Sophia is one of her names. Right. She's a multi-dimensional being, so she has different names and, and different aspects. So. Right. And the, the, big, guy, uh, the big city, Neom, the big ne uh, can they, Neom in Saudi Arabia, you've heard about that, right? Project Neom, which is going to be built as like a huge uh, AI-based city in the Middle East in Saudi Arabia. Neom, it's it's very messianic hmm. in, a, in a way. I don't know if you've, wow. you're familiar with it. It's um, a smart city, too. Smart, right? Yeah. Like yeah, uh, that's the future. Smart cities, right? Yeah, they call it smart, but uh, I think things are going to make us smarter. Uh, <laughs> so, um, well, uh, Michael, it was uh, really a great pleasure. If you have anything to add or a final word uh, for my listeners, and I'll, I'll, I'll let you go and and uh, enjoy the sun over there. Well, well, my final word is is to live your life as happy as possible while you're here in the matrix. Do what you love to do and know that you do have a choice at the end of this life and uh, carefully consider that choice. Um, everyone has to do their own research. Don't take what I say. You have to, it has to be your own truth and it has to be your own understanding of why you would want to leave the matrix. Okay. Right. Right. Thank and, you very much for this interview. I really appreciate it, the time. Oh, you're very welcome. And and you're going to have another uh, uh, addition to your book uh, soon? Or, yeah, or? Um, I'm, I'm adding to it and, and, and correcting some of the galactic history that I got wrong. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So, Great. And Great. I have a deeper understanding in the past year. And I suspect the year from now, it'll be the same again. <laughs> Maybe. Great. Just, well, it was deeper. All right. Well, well, I'll keep getting ad updates every year then from you. And uh, okay, it's sure. a great pleasure. All right. Well, mm -hmm. take care. Well, we'll see you uh, next time, uh, dear listeners. Mm -hmm. And thanks again, Michael. It was it was really great. It was fun. Thank you. Likewise. Take, take care. care take care. Bye bye. Aloha. Aloha.